Okay, and I'm also going to attempt to go live. Oh, I think you did it. Oh my goodness. I feel like Tom Hanks right now in uh, Castaway when he's like, I made fire. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were saying when he got weird with that ball, but yeah. You did it. <laughs> that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think we are live on Facebook. If anyone wants to uh, we are. confirm, sweet. Awesome. All right. Welcome everyone to the LPPA uh, candidate Q&A for the convention 2022, which is being held uh, the weekend of March 4th. Um, <clears throat> the purpose of this uh, Q&A is for membership to ask uh, questions of our candidates in an informal setting. Uh, we have a fairly good um, slate of candidates on the meeting tonight, so I think that everyone will be able to make some wonderful informed decisions uh, moving into March. So um, with that, I am going to uh, start it off by opening up and allowing candidates to introduce themselves. Um, and all right, so what's going on in here? It's saying that everyone has to be unmuted by a moderator. I fixed it, we're good. Oh, you fixed yeah, it? We're good. <laughs> We're good. All I right, fixed cool. it. Don't worry. Don't, Bonnie, <laughs> yeah. I got it. Don't worry. I got you. Okay. All right. I'm, I am technologically inept, <laughs> everyone. So this is like a big deal. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is we'll start out by allowing the chair candidates to introduce themselves. Then we'll move down and we'll do um, Western, Central, Eastern, Treasurer, and Secretary, if that works. I was going to say you want to just go in alphabetical order on who is in this list. <laughs> That works too. Because that'll be way easier to keep track of instead of just going back. Like the first person I see is Anthony Portillo. So okay. if Anthony, if you want to uh, jump up there first and uh, I'll, I'll highlight you, sir. And then I'm going to give you uh, three minutes. Is this what I get for calling you a very, very failed comedian? Yeah, no, no. I'm going to actually mute <laughs> you the whole time. No one's going to hear a word you say, but good oh, luck. Awesome. No, so, oh, <laughs> so your time starts now. So my name is Anthony Portillo. I have been a libertarian for most of my life, the first two books I ordered off Amazon were the Anarchist Cookbook and uh, <laughs> Secrets of Methamphetamine Manufacture by Uncle Fester, but keep that one between us. Uh, I have been a political nerd since I was about 10 years old and never really decided to get involved. And then when COVID came around, I felt like this was the opportunity for me to get involved. I came to my first box meeting and I said, I came here to fight people. So I'm here to put my money where my mouth is. I think I bring a fresh perspective to the position. Uh, I, I have a vision for the position that, I mean, obviously we want to get the remaining counties affiliated, give the existing counties the tools they need to grow and the support they need. But I also have a vision for issues coalitions that I think we could touch on a regional basis. Uh, one specific to my heart that I know I share with uh, people that are watching right now is drug addiction. It's hit close to home. It's uh, affected my family in many ways. So if I can get the people, the surrounding counties and areas to work together, we can reach a whole lot more people. I also have a background in holding events and comedy shows. That's how I know about Adam's, Adam Nutter's uh, unsuccessful comedy career. So uh, I've been putting events together for a long time. I put together successful comedy shows during the uh, whole shutdown. So one of the areas that I'd like to focus outside of issues is fundraising and not just fundraising to make us money, but also having events so we could be a little more social. So from my perspective, I, I know a lot of people don't know me, but given your vote, my actions, my work, my character will speak for themselves. And I'll show that the EBC is a position that should be communicative, accessible, and ultimately accountable. Thanks for listening. Boom. All right, guys, don't vote for Anthony because he trashed me. So Anthony, no, no to Anthony. <laughs> I'm kidding, man. That was awesome. Um, Next on the list, give it up for my man uh, running for Western Vice Chair, uh, Mr. Bill Cox, everybody. Hey, guys. How's everyone doing tonight? Uh, my name is Bill Cox. I am the current chair of the Westmoreland County Libertarian Party, and I'm running for Western Vice Chair of the LPPA. 
a uh, little about me. Um, I became a libertarian back in 2012. I uh, never really got politically active, probably until about 18 months ago uh, when I started getting involved in the state party. Back in July of last year, I became chair of the Libertarian Party of Westmoreland County. Uh, since then, we've grown our membership. Uh, our attendance at meetings has went up. Um, My goal as Western Vice Chair is to get the remaining counties we have in the Western region affiliated and get their represent representation on the Board of Directors. I think we have 10 counties left. A uh, big way we can get the party to develop and grow is to get those counties affiliated and get them represented on the board. My goal is to build a sense of community in the Western region. We have 22 counties. Uh, I'd like to start more in-person events, doing Zoom meetings with all the counties, getting people together. Um, the biggest way we're going to be able to compete with the other parties is to have the most committed and active activists in the in the state. Um, we're never going to match the numbers of the other parties. It's just not going to happen anytime soon. So in order for us to be effective as a political organization, we have to have the most dedicated, hardworking people on our side. Um, so I want to build a sense of community out here so people want to come together and work with other people, no matter what your affiliation with caucus uh, or not. Um, I have a history on of organizing events with, uh, I'm a union member, I'm a steel worker. So I've helped with our local union uh, organizing protests. I've helped organize other unions and other shops. Um, I've worked with national, regional, and local affiliates as far as unions go. So I have a history of organizing people. Um, a lot of people know me. I've I've been throughout the western side of the state the last few months talking to people, trying to get some uh, legislation introduced at local levels. Uh, that's about it, guys. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them when we get to the question part. Awesome, Bill. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm jealous that Bill has no gray in his beard, and I do. That's a bummer because Bill's beard is fucking strong. All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> Best beard in the LPPA. <laughs> Next on the list is oh, the man of the myth, the legend himself, Mr. John Waldenberger, running for chair, I believe, of the state party of LP. Yes, of the LP. yes, that is the only thing you are correct. In regards to that first year comedy. <laughs> hey, everybody in so, the chat. Am I on mute? Yes, I'm on mute. How's everyone doing? Uh, yes, I am John Waldenberger uh, from uh, Montgomery County. I am running for chair of the state party. I am a small business owner, as you can see. Uh, one of the uh, best music stores in the area, Walden's Music in Quakertown. Uh, reason I'm running for chair is because I don't want to run for chair. Why don't I run for want to run for chair? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, I want to see the party continue uh, going on the trajectory we're heading. Um, you know, we just elected, you know, close to 170 libertarians this past November. I want to keep that momentum going. I want to get more libertarians on the ballot. Get us out there. Uh, you want bold messaging? We'll get bold messaging. It might not be your idea of bold messaging, but we're going to stick to, uh, you know, the, uh, the the facts you know stick to our platform and that will be bold messaging because the other parties they don't do that you know they don't talk about what their actual positions are we can be the ones to do that and we can change that narrative and educate the people of what libertarianism is and get more libertarians elected to office and if one day take over the country and then shut it all down <laughs> all right that's john waldenberg for chair everybody uh, next on the list, I believe is, uh, Eric running for us Senate. So let's go. Wait, there. no. Yes. Right. Eric. Yeah. Perhaps a different Eric. I'm not, I'm running for central region vice chair, not Senate. Not you, but you know what? I'm not hearing from the other Eric. So let's go for this Eric, Eric Brown running for central uh, regional vice chair, everybody. All right. Well, thank you. If I if I hit up against my time limit, please let me know. I got uh, I'm going to run through my bio real quick to, to hopefully give a sense that I have a in my personal and professional life a lot of leadership experience, uh, which will uh, I'll bring to bear in my role as Central Region Vice Chair. 
Uh, and, and like uh, Anthony, I'm, I'm a political junkie. I, I got that from my mom and my oldest brother who were politically active when I was a kid. But um, uh, I served four years active duty in the United States Coast Guard. I, uh, and uh, you, you wouldn't think that a, uh, a someone who uh, did suspect vessel boarding to so work with customs agents to try to track down drug traffickers would be uh, so adamantly opposed to the drug war, but I am, and I've seen it from, uh, I've seen it from that side of it. And I was uh, actually trained as a maritime law enforcement specialist. And so I, I have a fair amount of familiarity with the drug war from the inside, uh, adamantly opposed to it. Um, um, after the Coast Guard, I went to Penn State. I became, a, I got a degree in accounting. I'm a CPA. And uh, I was CPA for in public accounting for about 10 years and then about 20 years as a CFO and then general manager of operations at uh, a couple of daily newspapers. Uh, so I supervised quite a few people in those roles. Um, and uh, I've even been a CFO for an internet startup company. I'm currently winding down my career and uh, hope to a little bit later this year have a lot more free time to uh, devote to um, my role, hopefully my role as Central Region Vice Chair, uh, which as, um, and, and I, th I think it was Bill and, and probably Anthony as well, uh, emphasized the importance of uh, party development, especially at the county level. Uh, that'll be one of my priorities uh, and, and as well as um, bringing my experience as a in, in my professional life of writing reports and, and uh, reporting up and down the chain and and, and and with an emphasis on good communication in all directions with uh, the uh, leadership of the LPPA and, uh, and also at the, the county levels. Uh, in my personal life, I'm, um, I'm married and I have five adult kids. Uh, three of my kids are registered libertarians, uh, members of the LPPA. Uh, well, at least two of them are. I'm not 30 sure. Thirty seconds. Okay, and um, and uh, I'm uh, uh, an, a strong advocate for liberty, and um, and uh, I hope uh, you'll give me your strongest consideration for this role. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. <clears throat> uh, oh, Tim had a question for you, Eric. He asked you what re uh, county are you in? I think. Yeah, what county? Oh, you thank you. Uh, um, it, it's Blair County. Blair County. Um, Right near where Altoona, Holidaysburg is. There you go. Eric, everybody. All right. Next on the, the list. The other Eric is here. Oh, boom. All right. Here. There you go, Eric. All right. Then uh, then we're going, Eric, you, Eric, for U.S. Senate. Go. Well, wait, 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 wait. wait. I, wait, 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 wait hold on. Hey, uh, where, where do, this is uh, specifically for XCOM candidates, not for like state offices. That's fine. Or you know, I, I just wanted to address, I wanted to hear everybody's opinion. I wanted to hear about everybody. I didn't really need to say yeah. anything. I don't need a time. I'm just here to listen to everybody and get to know everybody a little bit. Appreciate it, bro. All right, cool. Sorry. Never mind. Uh, moving on then. Running for, I believe, Eastern Vice Chair, uh, Freya Hassenmeyer. Sorry if I screwed that up, but let me put you on the thing. Spotlight you. Boom. Floor is yours. All right. Thank you. Yes, it's Hassenmeyer. Um, I am the Vice Chair of the Wayne Pike uh, Libertarian Party. Um, I'm running for Eastern Vice Chair. Uh, I ran for constable in the last election. I did not win, but in a county, or well, a township that had, you know, at most 400 votes in every party, I mean, every race, my race pulled a, close to 800. Um, I'm really good at getting people out and inspiring people that wouldn't normally you know, the, the people that gave up on the on the whole system. Um, uh, let's see what else. I'm a small business owner. I've had my business since 2007, repairing restaurant equipment. Um, yeah, that's about it. Short and sweet. Thank you, Freya. 
Oop, sorry, I was texting. <laughs> Thank you for it. <laughs> uh, next on the list is going to be Mr. Greg Deal running for secretary, I believe. Greg, the floor is yours, sir. Hey, thank you very much. Hey, my name is uh, Greg Deal. Um, I am currently the chair in Butler County. Um, I have been a libertarian since about 2013, uh, just after the Ron Paul days, but uh, he was a pretty big influence on me. Um, I am a small business owner. Um, I am a veteran, uh, which kind of actually drove me to the Libertarian Party. Um, and I'm going to beat Joel to it. I am also an elected libertarian. Um, I, I'm an auditor here in Jefferson Township, uh, which is a, a podunk township outside of there. Um, I've held several um, secretary positions in local and regional and one national uh, organization outside of the LP. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what I can do there. I, what I'd like to do is, you know, take what Bonnie, I think, has done a great job keep uh keep moving in that direction make ourselves joe i don't need to see that yeah it's uh um you know start keep moving that direction make us more transparent make us you know more timely and uh make sure our up our records are updated and available to to everybody um uh, i'm looking forward to serving you guys i'm looking forward to answering any questions awesome thank you mr greg deal sir uh next on the list i believe running for treasurer is laura hackenberg hello uh, my name is laura hackenberg i live in um, northampton county i was recently elected the chair of the party there um, i'm also the auditor in um, lower mount bethel so i'm also an elected libertarian <laughs> um I've been a libertarian pretty much my whole life, a lover of all things liberty. And let's see, as far as my vision, I um, I have a plan to uh, talk about trying um, to put a lot of transparency through and to work on thorough reporting in the meetings. I have, I have a lot of a lot of plans. So um, and there's my intro, but we'll talk more in the questions. <laughs> Short and sweet. That was like a that was like a perfect Oscar speech. No, I was like, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll talk more later. <laughs> That's good. I like it. I like that. Uh, all right. So I believe next, I believe on this list is running for LPPA treasurer, uh, Nicole Schultz. Nicole. Hi, um, I am your current treasurer. Um, I'm running again for treasurer because there's still some things that need to be fixed. If anything that the audit has shown me, which you guys will obviously get the audit report next month because we got bumped in the last meeting. Oh, and thank you, Joel and Bonnie for doing this for us. I really appreciate it. Kudos to you two for even thinking of it and doing it. So hats off. Um, <clears throat> one thing our the treasurer report has shown me, the audit has shown me is we are lacking in a lot of areas when it comes to the treasurer and um, the things that were put in place to make the treasurer's job a lot easier. While they were put in place, they weren't set up properly. Um, Bonnie, you'll understand this when I say that our um, QuickBooks is there, it's shit. There are no vendors put in. There's no way to go in and fix a lot of the stuff because we, it got, we lost it for a few months because we couldn't get the credit card changed in it. So we lost it, everything got archived. So we can't go in and put that, this was part of the molten maneuver. This was part of um, convention, stuff like that. We are currently working on fixing that. We're adding um, the uh, vendors as we go. Um, I think a lot of you will be surprised and shocked when the audit report comes out. Um, I wasn't expecting what I found, but I found it and there it is. So. Um, I think everybody will will be pleasantly surprised when the treasurer report comes out. Um, there, there are some a lot of roadblocks that were put in place for the treasurer, which we are currently working on getting those roadblocks removed. Um, so I, I want to finish the job I started. I hate leaving something left unfinished. Um, I hate the mess that it's in right now. I literally just spent 
17 hours after over the last two days to get our state report correct and so it can be submitted in time that included going back and fixing last year's state report so that we have an accurate recording of what we're doing um so I, I, and I'm looking forward to the questions that you guys might have. Um, you guys know my skill level. You know that not only do I own my own business, excuse the junk behind me, because that's part of my business that I need to put away yet, um, that I've also been a supervisor and a postmaster for the post office for 20 years. I've held over more than a million dollars in stamp stock, which is crazy considering I ran five offices at the same time and had stamp stock in all of those offices the most being a million dollars, the least um, office that I was in was about $750,000. Um, so running five post offices seconds. at the same time is not an easy job. If I can wrangle federal employees, I can wrangle anybody. So I look forward to all the questions you guys have, except for audit questions. I can't answer those yet. All right. Was Nicole Schultz for re-running for treasurer? Uh, next on the list, the most handsome man out of Allegheny County, Mr. Rob Cowburn, running for state chair. Thank you, Adam. Uh, hey guys, I'm Rob Coburn. Um, I am a trial attorney by trade, a restaurant tour, and small batch whiskey distiller. Um, I'm also um, the treasurer of Allegheny County. Uh, the outreach director of Allegheny County until recently. I was also the financial director of Allegheny County. Um, I'm the uh, LPPA state board rep for Allegheny currently. Uh, I'm also on the legal action committee and the uh, media relations committee. Um, I am here uh, talking to you today because I'd like to uh, sit as chair for you or in the next year in this, uh, this state party that we have here. Um, what I believe that I can bring to you as chair is um, is, is uh, structure and organization that as we continue to grow will put us in a place where we can not just can uh, you know have the growth we've seen but but grow that exponentially. What I would like to do is is a is a three prong approach to to this chair. The first, um, as as I think everybody famously knows, we just had a seven hour board meeting, not to the um, uh, best efforts of everybody, but we just had too much business to get to get focused on. And what I believe needs to happen is that this business that is being brought to the state board uh, uh, should really, a, a lot of it should be handled in a lot of different areas. First, I believe that we need to have a local affiliate centric approach where um, a lot of the attention that, that we're trying to bring is uh, been on the state party so far. Um, but what, where it should be is really in the local affiliates. You know, the state party should really be helping our local affiliates grow and, and develop their uh, committees and develop their um, um, candidates. And we should just be an aid to them in a lot of this stuff. But a lot of it turns to the, the state board, I think, because we were a young and growing party. But it's time to hand a lot of that off to the state. Uh, the second uh, approach that I believe that, that can bring us into structure and order here and, and bring these meetings down is by... Uh, focusing heavily on our committees. Uh, we have a number of great committees uh, ready and, and willing to work, but we take a lot of, of the business that should be properly delegated in these committees and we bring it up at the board meetings. You know, right now, I think we have uh, upwards of 47 different board members and that's only gonna grow. We have 67 counties. We could potentially have 67 board members. And if we have 67 people putting in their two cents on everything that, that, that gets brought to the party, we're never gonna get anywhere. Not only are we gonna have, can you continue to have seven hour meetings, we're gonna have eight, nine, 10 hour meetings. So what needs to happen is we need to, to properly staff our committees and be delegating to them properly. And, and every committee, every month should be submitting a report and bringing a presentation to the board, the, you know, telling us what they did, what, where they're going, and then, and then simply ask for the, the board to approve things that, that they can't do on their own. So uh, by focusing on a, on a committee heavy approach, I believe we can get a lot of this uh, 20 seconds, Rob. disagreement down. Uh, and the third approach is by following Robert's rules to the letter. We have a lot of people that don't even realize what it means to be recognized. Um, uh, uh, you know, we, we need, sorry, I'm alarm going off there. Uh, we, we need people to understand how to be recognized at the board meeting. And we need to recognize our board members only by their county. So we rem remind people who they're accountable to. Thanks. Boom. Rob Coburn, everyone. Uh, and I believe last on the list is Sally Combs running for central vice chair. 
Uh, I think she needs to start a video or I cannot highlight her. So I'm going to ask. I'm just going to sit here in awkward silence <laughs> until then. <laughs> I have Rob. Also, Joel and Tim could go fuck each other. I hate you guys. <laughs> Roasting me in the goddamn comments. I'm trying to pay attention. Just keep seeing my name get trashed. <laughs> That's all I say. <laughs> All right, is she not here? Is she back out? No, she's. I think she might be trying to reconnect. Do you want? Oh, no, there, there you go. No, here she is. Here she is. I think she's here. Yes. Boom. Can got it. We got it. All right, Sally. Uh, time right. is yours. Uh, hi guys, I'm Sally Combs. Um, I'm relatively new here. I know a couple people. Um, I am one of your elected libertarians, just uh, newly elected this year as the mayor for the borough of Jersey Shore. Um, I have a background in mental health and addiction recovery services, as well as child education. Um, and I'm in the business of solving problems. Um, so here at the LPPA, we've got a couple of those. <laughs> and I like to help people identify their problems and get them connected to whoever can can fix the problem with them. Um, I don't know all the answers. I make a lot of mistakes. Uh, I reach out for a lot of support. I would definitely not be here if it wasn't for the help of a lot of people. Um, uh, this is me plugging Liz Terwilliger. <laughs> she's fantastic. Uh, she's the reason I'm here. Um, so once I came to the LPPA, I kind of hit things really hard, as much of us do. Uh, right now, I'm currently the chair for the membership committee. I'm also organizing the 2022 convention here in Lycoming County. I volunteer with uh, several committees and subcommittees, uh, affiliate support, information services, candidate support. Um, affiliate support is kind of where I really would like to focus, which is why I feel like a, uh, a good candidate for CVC. Um, uh, my goals for the position would be to establish a social media presence for the central region. Um, that is something that is not here. Um, I would also like to make sure that the board vote for the central vice chair position reflects the affiliates within the central region. Um, I've kind of seen that's like a disconnect and I feel like that's a thing that should probably be happening. Um, I also believe through my work in various committees, there's a lot of stuff that we don't know how to do. 30 seconds. Uh, Thanks. Um, like uh, Mr. Calburn was pointing out, uh, Robert's rules and our bylaws and the policy manual. I, I want to help educate our affiliates and our new members and even people that have been here for a while on those things. I, I think that's a great idea I, and um, I'll, I'll gladly support him in doing that. Um, I, I guess that's it. Thank you. All right. Well, that's everybody, I believe. <laughs> that's everybody. So we could go on to hey. now. Yeah. Hey, 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 Nutter, I think you forgot somebody. Who? Me. No, I was doing a bit. I was going to see how long that could go until somebody else called it out, but you ruined it. It's fine. Guys, we're going to go over now to the, uh, the last person, uh, truly, I believe, on the list for real. No bit intended uh mr joel gets running for eastern vice chair give it up just another example of a failed adam nutter comedy routine that's fantastic <clears throat> um anyway so there's been a lot of discussion about experience versus uh you know a breath of fresh air and i think that i i, I do that uh i think i cover both of those bases i'm uh Going into my second year as the chair of Monroe County, I'm the chair of uh, media relations and social media for the LPPA. 
um, social media for libertarians, aside from being the secretary, is probably one of the least fun jobs that you can have because, uh, well, I mean, you guys know we all agree on everything, especially on Twitter, where everybody's a tough guy. So, uh, but uh, we've been doing that. Um, but also in terms of being a you know fresh air, um, members of every caucus or faction or group uh, could probably point to at least one of my votes that they didn't like. Um, so clearly I am not just voting based on uh, group lines or caucus lines. I am uh, not a member of caucus. I'm a member of the Libertarian Party of Pennsylvania and that's how I vote. I vote for what is good for the party and that's what I would continue to do. Um, as Eastern Vice Chair, I would want to, I would basically, I would want the role to be more active and less, less passive. Um, I would want to support county candidates nominated by county committees. Um, I have the time and the ability to go around and, and help these candidates and I would like to do that. Um, support, and I would love to support uh, more single issue uh, coalitions such as um, what Mark Vizzacco and others are doing down in Philly with the Don't Tread on Philly. Um, I think as a state party and as an Eastern region, we have missed a huge opportunity to support that, um, A, because it's a great thing, and B, because we could also tie the party into it and grow the party from it. Um, and as EVC, I would try to make myself more accessible um, than some in the party uh, have been. I would like to hold weekly office hours. Uh, virtually, you know, get to get to talk to people about what their concerns are. Um, or in person office hours, if anybody wants to go have a beer, that'd be even better. Um, and I would want to be in a group chat with all my all the the chairs in my region, like, um, like somebody had said, that the Eastern vice chair vote is not my vote. It's the vote of the Eastern region of the party. And I think to vote based on based on anything else is disingenuous and uh, shouldn't shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be done. So that's what I would want to do as Eastern Vice Chair. And I can probably guarantee you that this got more laughs than any of Adam Nutter's comedy. And I yield my time. All right, give it up for fucking failed yoga master Joel Getz, everybody. Fucking slimy piece of shit that's what you look like <laughs> all right now we're truly done <laughs> now i believe we're truly done with all the candidates uh yeah so i think we can move on to uh just general questions so if anybody i think you guys could raise your hand in the chat or something like that right so let's just start raising hands and then we'll go down of course adam g is the first person with his hand raised of course biggest nerd in the whole list uh so we're gonna go over to adam g everybody uh lower your hand i got you bud ready so we're gonna add you B boom adam g where you at how's it going everyone uh greetings from lancaster my question is for the entire XCOM, uh can all the XCOM candidates do you support live streaming our board meetings to youtube and making the recordings available to the membership at large thank you you just want to run all down right, that list so again we're, yeah we're gonna to have to go down the whole list again all right so uh anthony you, yes you are up first yes yes okay all right i can't there's no way i'm spotlighting everybody's gonna take fucking forever <laughs> i'll try bill yes they uh, should do live okay. streaming uh freya definitely all right greg deal absolutely all right rob calburn Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with transparency and hopefully maybe people will be in a little better behavior if they know they're being watched. John Waldenberger. As long as we have a set plan in place to pay for it, of course. All right. Uh, Eric Brown. I'm a yes also. Yes also. Laura Hackenberger. Definitely yes. Cool. Uh, Nicole Schultz. I think more people will behave better if it's out there for everybody to see. Okay. And then uh, Joel Getz. I will not behave any better, but yes. Okay, good. <laughs> and then Sally yeah. Combs. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay, cool. So that's a resounding yes uh, from everybody, from Adam G. All right. 
Uh, more hands are raised. So I see Gabrielle Monroe. Uh, what's up? Um, my question is for the chairs, um, including the Western, Central, and Eastern chairs. Um, I love being a libertarian, and I'm sure most of us in here do. Uh, community building for our party is important, and candidate support within our party is also important. We face two harsh realities when it comes to candidate support, the lack of funding to support candidates. And the second reality we face is the libertarian vote alone won't win most elections in Pennsylvania. So to help support candidates, what are your thoughts on exploring a marketing campaign highlighting the people running over the party as a way to support all libertarian candidates. We have Zoom where we can coordinate something and put together a thing to include anybody who would like to be included and support the, the candidates a little more this year. Those are just my thoughts. And I'm personally inspired by Liz, Fillinger, I think. Um, somebody just sent me a, a message to contact Liz about a food pantry thing, and that's kind of my thing. I do outreach, and I'm all about getting food to the community. So I believe um, highlighting some of that might be an easy way to spend a less amount of money and get the most impact, and then maybe push it on social media or something. All right, Gabrielle, thank you for your question. Uh, I also like how she was like, I have a question for all the chairs and then named all the chairs. It's like, yeah, no, we know. You, we knew from the first part of that. <laughs> you said all the chairs. <laughs> so we're going to go to uh, uh, Anthony Portillo first. Uh, Anthony, uh, boom. Uh, so community service is a huge thing to me since I was a kid. My sister and I spent our Saturday mornings volunteering at a food pantry. We took uh, gifts to kids in the woods, things like that. And uh, my kids and I used to, when we were allowed, uh, go to the city, buy food for homeless people, take them to lunch, get them some clothes, things like that. So community service is a huge thing for me. Uh, I was involved in the church world for a lot of years and everything we did in terms of outreach wasn't church related, it was community related. So I look at things from that perspective. If you look at the work that Audrey and Mark Pizzacco have done with Don't Tread on Philly, uh, I was at the Mummers Parade protest and there were I was with a Democrat lady almost half the day uh, and a lot of people just coming around to common cause. So I think there's a lot of ways that we can work to reach people. And in terms of fundraising, that's my wheelhouse. And I, I love getting people out. I love making people laugh. I'm like Adam Nutter. And uh, <laughs> so I'm happy to uh, use my relationships in areas and build new ones to help facilitate those fundraising events for candidates and such. All right. Thank you, sir. I want to be very clear. I am funny and I feed my family this way. So I just want to make that very clear. Please come see me do comedy. <laughs> God, these guys are going to make me not be, no one's going to come to my shows. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Uh, next to answer that question, uh, Mr. Joel Getz. Yeah, I, uh, I would be interested in doing anything I can to support our candidates. I think as the Eastern Vice Chair, that's just about the most important role I would have. Um, and to piggyback off community service, um, that's a big thing that I'm going to be bringing up this year as I start my second year as chair for Monroe is, uh, you know, community outreach and, and community service. Um, uh, last year, I all every year for the past several years, I have um, fundraised for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Um, which is actually very important for anyone who has to listen to Adam Nutter's comedy. And um, <laughs> and um, I did it under the banner of the Monroe County Libertarian Party. Um, so more things like that. Um, you know, it's it's as simple as doing good things and maybe wearing a Libertarian t-shirt while you do it. Um, it's not difficult to, to do outreach. Um, and any any little or big thing that we can do to promote our candidates. 30 seconds. Shut up, matter. And uh, or, nerd. Or, uh, or more importantly, the message of freedom and liberty. I would fully support and uh, do whatever I can to to help. Boom. All right. Just want to remind everybody, I took the time out of my day to do this for free. Uh, next on the list is uh, Mr. Bill Cox. Hey, hey guys. Uh, 
First, I think community outreach and community service are two big things we need to focus on. Uh, I've learned a lot from community outreach and uh, doing community service with my grandfather. He was the local uh, leader of our local um, Salvation Army. So when I was younger, I went with him. We did bell ringings and a bunch of other stuff, different fundraisers to raise money and food for other people. Uh, so I definitely think we can do a lot with uh, community service in the party. As far as supporting candidates through people outside the party, I think that's a big thing we can do with single issue coalitions reaching across the aisle. We don't have to agree with people from other parties on 100% of things, but what we can do is find those issues where we do agree with people, work with them on that and support our candidates through that. Um, we, I think there are a lot of opportunities for us to do different fundraisers throughout the state. And, and I think we need to start doing that at a county level and regionally. Um, we can host galas and stuff and fundraise for our candidates. I think that's where we should start. All right, Bill. Thank you, sir. Uh, next to answer this question is Sally Combs. Cause she's just there on my fucking mouse. So <laughs> Sally Combs. <laughs> um, oh, Gabrielle, I actually met you at um, the Perspectives on Freedom event that Liz Terwilliger did. I am uh, the contact coordinator for Liz Terwilliger for Congress. And um, so a lot of us that don't know Liz, uh, uh, she is a, a, a big factor in our affiliate being successful. She has taught us uh, how to identify a problem, come up with a solution, get the community involved in that solution. Um, and then uh, we, we follow through with the plan uh, then we are able to write uh, a media press release for what we did. And of course we have social media uh, bursts that we're able to put out through the whole process. Um, and, and that is, is a is really helpful skill set of, of, of things that need to be done for affiliates to be successful. And a lot of affiliates uh, just don't have those things. They might not have someone that is um, able to uh, do their their writing um, and and support for us to connect those affiliates with those resources because strong affiliates means uh, strong candidates. Um, so thirty seconds. Th oop, I, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, it's Sally Combs. Everybody. Uh, next to answer this question is, I believe it's Freya Hassenmeyer. Yes, uh, it's, I mean, outreach is very important. I, you know, it was very aggravating for me when I became active in the party and, you know, Wayne and Pike, we had our, you know, monthly meetings and, but we didn't do anything else. That's, you know, why I proposed and set up, you know, set up going to the fair and we have a few other things in the works. Um, you know, the biggest problem with community outreach is it, it does take funding. Um, so you have to work that out uh you know and you know a lot of times it, it, you also need to spend time with people from other parties and work with them and you know work on the issues that you agree on you know for instance you know a lot of the people that donated to my campaign were republicans um i didn't expect that 30 but, seconds you know reaching across aisles is you know is very important so, Ed, that's it okay cool thank you uh hey rob did you go yeah rob went right no i didn't know you didn't all right then no. rob you are next on the list where the hell is your kind of name they are. Well, uh, Gabrielle, I believe that your question was, would I support, uh, you know, uh, cross uh, cross support for, for different areas of everybody's candidates? And yes, absolutely. I think this is something that we should be doing, not just with candidates, but, uh, you know, with all of the actions that we do. We have all of our affiliates opening up social media accounts and new affiliates, you know, joining every day. We should be interacting and, and promoting each other's uh, events, candidates, successes, uh, you know, um, as much as we can. And that way we'll, we'll boost the algorithms, get more attention and, and get a lot more PR. But, but the way that I think that we can really help our candidates the best 
is by by banking a a a, a uh, group of volunteers who are ready to go at you know and 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 uh, generating fundraising um, continuously. And the way that I believe that we can do that is through helping our local affiliates uh, organize local issue coalitions. If we are able to get people uh, active on issues that are that are uh, you know hot in their area, this can generate um, you know groups of volunteers that are continuously have something to do and continually asking for reasons to, to, work, to raise funds. So if we have this group of volunteers that are always, you know, on tap, ready to go and, and fundraising coming in regularly, then when we need these volunteers and fundraising for candidates, they're, they're going to be ready and available. So by, I think by promoting a local issue coalitions, we can help our candidates by having a, a ready supply of volunteers and funds. Boom. Rob, thank you, sir. Uh, I believe John Waldenberger is the last chair person on the list. So, uh, it goes to John. Yes. So, um, yeah, so I think that is one of the biggest areas where we have dropped the ball, uh, in the past is especially for our statewide candidates. We don't do enough pushing for them. I think we need to utilize everything possible. Again, it comes down to funding, uh, reaching out for donors. Um, you know, we should probably have, you know, work hand in hand with the campaigns to get commercials out there for the media, be it radio, TV, uh, social media, uh, you know, anything outreach wise uh, at the county level, the counties need to step up too. Um, you know, we can't just rely on just the state to take the full action. The, you know, if we're a bottom up organization, counties need to grab the reins and step up too. And, uh, you know, the best thing we can do is encourage and provide support to help them do that. All right. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank all you, right. everybody. Point of privilege, Who's... if you don't mind, I'm sorry. Uh, I asked in the chat how to raise your hand. I, and they were saying reactions. I do not see reactions. So this is uh, Matthew Schutter of Lehigh County. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, it, when you call on me, but I would like to ask the candidates. You got it. I got you, sir. You're Thank on you. The list. I will remember. My brain trauma will remember Matthew Shutter. I promise. It's on there. It's easy enough to remember. All right. Uh, Mitch, you had your hand uh, raised for, I think, the longest. So, uh, Mitch, you want to go right ahead and ask your questions? Okay. Well, I came in here late, so this may have been answered already. This is for everyone. As we all know, there is a major divide in our party. What will you do to help heal the divide? Okay. Uh, big question from Mitch. All right, so we go down the list again. Uh, I'm just getting, I'm just going down again. Whoever I see first, who's running for something on this list. So the first one up is uh, Eric Brown. If you want to go ahead, you are muted. You're muted. Hold on, wait. You're muted. How do I unmute you? Uh, you I I clicked it, but I missed. There you go. Sorry, right, but well, Mitch. Uh, first thing I'll say to you is that I'll be willing to listen to anyone who wants to come to me in a civil, uh, reasonable way, uh, and, and we can have a, an honest discussion and, and, uh, um, and, and try to find common ground, find, uh, and I'm sure there is a lot of common ground among a, a bunch of libertarians. So we need to really begin by focusing on that. And that will help us, uh, I think, forge a, uh, a, a foundation to then talk about the areas where we may disagree. And, you know, um, I think it's that type of an approach can work better than just launching into a, an attack or, or, or an argument about things that have happened in the past. And, and I'm done. All right. Uh, Joel. Garbage, you go. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> oh, yeah, caught me making a fresh drink. But um, Good. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So um, I can do that because <clears throat> I, I I already do. Um, I'm the chair of media relations and social media, where 
we have members from multiple different factions in there right now and they operate very smoothly a lot more smoothly than people thought they were going to um when we were adding members to them um i personally you know put my name on the line when we wanted to add uh mr cowburn and mr jacob winograd to media relations and people were like oh no they're gonna do whatever people are afraid of um they've been huge members in that committee uh bringing great ideas and great uh great debate to things um and you know you could say a lot of things about me but you can't say i'm not honest and open-minded um <laughs> my voting records prove that on board calls um I don't hate anyone based on a group they choose to belong to. That's kind of the entire point of libertarianism. So that's it. Boom. All right, Joel. Uh, next, Mr. Bill Cox. Uh, I think my record speaks for itself. I, we have a county where we have people from all different factions. Uh, anybody in the county can speak to whether we exclude, include, work together as a whole team. Um, a big thing we can do to mitigate the divide, I think is doing more in-person events. A lot of the hostilities and the fighting that comes from the party happens online. Anybody who goes to the in-person events can attest to that just doesn't happen in person. You might get some heated arguments over hot topics, but everybody for the most part gets along, is cordial with each other. Uh, I think that having more in-person events is going to go a long way towards healing that divide, getting people together, whether it's for business meetings, fundraising events. I think that'll go, that's our best bet to start healing the divide that the state seconds. party faces. That's it. All right. You, you guys know you don't have to end it when I say 30 seconds. You actually have 30 seconds. <laughs> oh, I, I, was, I was getting ready to wrap it up either way. I know, but the last three people were like, and I'm done. It's like, I can say 30 seconds. All right. Uh, who's next? uh anthony you didn't go right no i didn't go. all right uh anthony go so uh while i am a member of the mises caucus i am also a newer member to the party so i don't have the same history that other people have i'm willing to work with anybody who's reasonable and willing to be accountable and has a, a motivation to further the message of liberty when I was in the church world, I was a charismatic preacher and got invited to Baptist churches where people thought I was predestined for hell. And somehow I found a way to win those people over. So I, I'm sure I could do the same thing with libertarians who just don't like me because of who my friends are. So I'd rather focus on the, what's in front of us and not, not what's behind us. And I'd like to put that stuff in the rear view and, and move past it for good. I think the social events, those regional issue coalitions and things like that will help support that. If we find more things we have seconds. in common we'll stop looking at all the things we don't have in common. All right, Anthony, you are still garbage. Those people were right. Uh, I love you. <laughs> Next on the list is Mr. Waldenberger. That's a great question. Thank you. Um, well, yeah, I, you know, to be honest, a lot of this uh, divide is uh, pretty recent, I would say, within the last year. Um, let's chalk it up to the biggest issue. It's growing pains. We have a lot of people that have suddenly come into this party, uh, you know, with ideas, some ideas that have already been tried and maybe not have worked, some ideas that are new, and we have people that aren't willing to accept new ideas. Um, you know, we just need to put the bullshit aside and, you know, spend time focusing on uh, you know, plans and accomplishments. How can we do this? Well, one thing, uh, turn a lot of the work to the committees, turn it to the, you know, the finance and affiliate support and also, and also the county committees and put a lot of work in places where people can actually get together and work as opposed to running to the board, screaming, crying and the JC, uh, you know, <laughs> all that fun stuff. All right. John, thank you. Uh, next, Freya Hassenmeyer. Sorry. Yes. Um, in general, I'm you know, a lot of this boils down to the caucuses, and in general, I'm not a fan of caucuses. They are counterproductive to the party as a whole, but they're also necessary. Um, you know, a necessary evil, because there are people with different opinions. 
Um, but there's one common goal of smaller government, and it's all about communication. Getting through the differences is all about communication. That's something our party really needs to work on is communication. And that's why a lot of these these problems are not getting solved or are dragging out. All right, thank you. Uh, next, Mr. Greg Deal. All right, thank you. Um, I think the biggest issue here is is listening, right? We always we all like to talk, we all like to say what we have to say, but we sometimes have difficulty listening. We agree pretty much on close to 80% of everything. There's no need for us to be fighting about that 20% all the time. Um, and it's really doing us a disservice whenever we're fighting with each other rather than fighting the state and fighting uh, everything else that we, need to, that we need to accomplish. We're just setting ourselves back. Um, my thing would be, you know, I'm friends with people on every side. Um, I'm sort of fairly newer to this and uh, I'm on the western side of the state, so we don't have the a lot of the animosity that uh, you see in other parts of the state. Um, everybody gets along for the most part really well out here, which um which is great to see. Um, I think that you know these social events seconds. and sitting down and listening to each other is going to be a huge part of it um, because we can come together through understanding. Thanks. Boom. All right. Thank you, Greg. Uh, Laura, you're next. Okay. Um, I think a lot of the problems that we're having are a result of lack of communication, um, creating a culture of distrust um, within the party. I am willing to do my part to create transparency. A lot of that is surrounding money. And uh, I want to create transparency so that everybody knows what's going on with the money. And um, I, ho I hope that that will bring... Um, some peace <laughs> to, to the situation. All right, Laura, thank you. Uh, Nicole Schultz. I have, like many others have stated, I have friends on both sides of the divide. I came in to the party after it started. I don't understand everything behind it. I've heard stories from both sides, but somewhere in there is hurt feelings from everything that happened. I think we all need to be adults. I think we all need to put our feelings aside and grow this like a business. We're here as business relationships. And if you make friends along the way, you make friends along the way. If you don't, you don't No hurt feelings. Um, I am friends with a lot of people on both sides. Um, I know that there is some issues with people thinking there's money that is there that isn't really there. Again, I think once you see the audit, I think a lot more people will understand what is going on and what has actually happened. Um, I know that before I took over treasurer, there really wasn't a treasurer report. You got what the bank account was. I think I've put more out there than most. Um, and. I will work with anybody on any side. I've proven that I've done that. Um, I think we need to grow the party and stop acting like children. All right, thank you. Uh, Sally? <laughs> I don't think you went, right? No. Okay. Um, uh, so the question is, how will I work to heal the divide? This is a question I was asked last year um, at convention when I ran for CBC. Uh, so uh, one, I believe that you would be hard pressed to find someone that doesn't think I've proved myself to be quite neutral over the past year. I'm very solution focused and I've worked with people on both sides. Uh, ultimately, I think leaning right into the suck is probably the best way for us to move forward. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that uh, my team and I have done a kick-ass job of making sure that the whole membership is represented at this upcoming convention. Um, 
I, I really do try my best to make sure that we are fixing the problems that arise and moving forward as quickly as we can. We do not have the perks that the duopoly have. We can't waste time anymore. Thank you, Sally. Um, was that everybody? I didn't go. Rob, God damn it. Rob, man. I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hold on. Uh, all right, Rob, Calvin, everybody. I guess. So this is something that I have uh, been saying since I got started with everybody is I really think that that we're all uh, different arms of the same body. You know, uh, we have people who are interested in different things. We have people who are interested in messaging. We have people who are interested in, in candidates. We have people who are interested in being a candidate. You know, if we realize that if we just you know allow each other to do what our interests are in and, and, we, and bring this thing up at every level that we can, then there's really nothing to fight about. We're all reaching towards the same thing. If we want to go about it in different ways, then let's try every avenue, and we don't have to criticize each other for it. But uh, if we, if you, uh, right away, if you want to get people to to start um, interacting a little better, there's two two great ways to do that. Number one is keep them busy. If we have uh, our committees working properly, uh, you know, staying busy all the time. If we have these issue coalitions getting formed, you have people having things to do all the time. There's no, there's not not even time to fight about. Um, and the, the next best way to, to get people, uh, you know, uh, interacting in a, in a civil way is by having them meeting in person, which is why I think we need to focus heavily on our local co our local affiliates rather than at the at the um, the state level. It would be wonderful if we could have a uh, in person state board meeting every month, because every time we have one, I, I love seeing all of you guys. Um, but but if we like put things off to our, our local affiliates. And these people are meeting in person. People don't. Pe people aren't arguing in their local affiliates. They're getting along. They're getting work done. So let's let's get people busy. Let's get them in person. And remember that we're all on the same team here. Boom. Uh, all agree. Rob's daughter is adorable. Yes. Yeah, I was just gonna say that I object to Rob having his daughter um, for the cute vote. <laughs> but that's just we don't all have that. Um, Crazy. I was like, gonna yeah, ask: Is Rob drinking with her? What is she having to drink there, Rob? <laughs> Uh, my business. Don't answer questions. She's a fan. I, I object as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just I, want I, to know if you're sharing. I didn't want my, I didn't want my wife to see your daughter. That's how cute she is. This is Rebel. <laughs> All right. Did everybody answer the question? Yes. Cool. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go to um. Hey, uh, where is he? Uh, Matthew Shutter. Are you here? Matthew. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead, man. Ask your question because I'm never gonna get to it if I don't see your hand. So, so go ahead. And ask your question. Uh, the question I was gonna have uh, was the question before, but uh, I have a different question uh, to it's to all the candidates. And my question is: Are you a member of a caucus? And if so, are you endorsed? And if you are endorsed, Will you and get elected? Will you have the will of the caucus, or will you have your own will and be your own person? All right. So the question is for anybody who is a little hard to hear. Uh, it sounded like Kane in RoboCop too. If that's a reference for anybody, get that though. That's funny. Uh, so, but um, so pretty much uh, what Matthew asked was, are you? everybody running no matter what position are you or are you not in a caucus and if you are will you take the will of the caucus or the will of the governed body into 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 office um so first we'll go with uh, again first on my list eric brown I'm, i consider myself an independent uh, thinker and uh, and i would approach you know um any, any issue or question uh, and thinking about it as, as I, you know, in the way that I uh, see it. Um, that said, uh, I am uh, uh, a member of the Mises Caucus and uh, I caucus with them uh, because I happen to uh, uh, be philosophically aligned with the, uh, the Ron Paul Liberty Movement that, that uh, did so much to help the Libertarian Party uh, years ago, and uh, and I'm also a big fan of uh, Ludwig von Mises' writing, and 
and uh, and the seconds. Austrian school. So, um, uh, I'm, but I'm an independent person, and I would make up my own mind about things. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, let's give it up for failed Geico caveman Joel Getz, everybody. Ah, uh, thank you, attractive Mark Vizacco. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the answer to the question, am I in a caucus, is the same as the answer to, do you think Adam Nutter is funny? No. Hold on. You didn't finish the second half of that question. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I'm well, sorry. There is none. You're right. I'm, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, you're right. Why don't you stick, why don't you stick to you. comedy and poorly? Fuck you. Mute. Mute him. Mute. He's muted. He's muted. <laughs> He's muted. Guys, no one, who even likes him? All right, uh, Sally Combs, you are next on the list. Sally. Hi, uh, I am not in a caucus. Um, and as central vice chair, I think that it's important for any voting that I would be doing to be reflective of what is morally right and what the affiliates in the central region want me to support. Uh, I think it's weird that regional vice chairs don't really like hang out with the affiliates to connect with them and see what direction they want things to go. Um, I mean, we it just just seems like that's something that's not happening and should be. Thank you. All right. Nice. Um, Anthony? So uh, I am a member of the Mises Caucus. I'm running for Eastern Vice Chair of the LPPA, not the Mises Caucus. So I'm here to serve the people of Pennsylvania and the Liberty Movement and help PA become the gold standard. I hope to, over the course of my time as Eastern Vice Chair, if you give me your vote, to meet a lot of you in person and to make it personally to counties on a regular basis. I'm not a huge fan of Zoom things. I like a handshake, a hug. I like to see what people look like, see how they talk. Uh, so for me, this Zoom shit is for the birds. So if, if elected, please believe you will see me. Plus, I just took up golf. So I need some golf courses in Eastern Region to check out. Boom. Uh, birds aren't real. Yeah, with the times. Bill Cox, uh, you are next. Uh, yes, I am a member of a caucus. I'm endorsed by the Mises Caucus as Western Vice Chair. I, my goal is to do what's right for the Libertarian Party of Pennsylvania in the Western region. Um, I'm not beholden to anybody uh, within the caucus. I push back on stuff. At the end of the day, I can caucus with the Mises Caucus because I feel they're the best vehicle for liberty. But I'm here to do what's best for the Libertarian Party. And as Western Vice Chair, that's exactly what I do. I do what's best for the Western region of Pennsylvania and in turn, the Libertarian Party of Pennsylvania. Boom. All right, Bill. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Waldenberger, go. Okay, that's working. So, well, so since I'll be the first one to speak, as far as the role of chair, uh, the role of chair does not technically vote. So that being said, uh, I would hope any caucus affiliation, no matter who it is, uh, goes out the window in that case. Um, your sole purpose is to run the meeting and provide a direction for the party. Now, yes, I am affiliated with the Cathedral Caucus, but the sole purpose of that is behind, behind that is to prevent takeovers of the party, hostile takeovers of, of, of this party. So if I find an issue that I can work with Mises Caucus or the Radical Caucus or, uh, you know, the Pragmatic Pragmat prags that they come back, you know, I will find an issue to work with them as long as we have agreements and can find a way to work civilly. All right, John, thank you. If I was running, I would have said I would uh, have the rivers run red with the blood of my enemies, but just me. Uh, next on the list is Freya Hassenmeyer for her Eastern Vice Chair. Um, well, as I said before, I am not a fan of caucuses but they are a necessary evil I, um, to, and mostly to get issues on the table, um, which is 
why I joined the Radical Caucus in December. And I haven't been active. I'm not doing much with them. My main goal and is is to support the party as a whole and do what's best for the party and grow the party. The the Radical Caucus just aligns with, with my views on things that are important to me. All right, Freya, thank you. I don't know anything about the Radical Caucus, but that would be hilarious if they're just like super into like fucking surfing and they're like, this is fucking radical. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just really, really think it's important to legalize drugs. <laughs> Yeah, we all do. I mean, <laughs> even if we don't, we all do them. So it's, <laughs> all right, uh, Greg Deal, everybody. Yeah, so I've uh, I've actually been a member of a few caucuses. Um, I've most recently, and I think I found my home here in the Mises Caucus. I am endorsed uh, by the Mises Caucus. Uh, that being said, when I decided to run for secretary, um, and I can probably fairly certainly speak for the most of the people that whenever they they signed up to run they decided to serve the people of pennsylvania the libertarian party uh members of pennsylvania um no caucus affiliation is going to change my vote or anything like that i i am a uh push i like to push back um as well just like bill um so that will not affect my ability to do anything or to do my job appropriately or to vote in the what I think in the best interest of the of the Libertarian Party of Pennsylvania is. That's it. Awesome, Thanks. Greg. Thank you, sir. Uh, Greg did pay me $50 to call him handsome, so he will take bribes. I'm just saying. So just so you guys know. <laughs> All right, uh, Laura Hackenberg, everybody. Laura Hack wait, wait, no, fuck, I lost her. Shit. I'm a <laughs> no, it's tough. No. Moving. No, hold on, wait. Yes, just wait. Okay, Laura, have her go. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, I am affiliated with the um, Mises Caucus and I'm endorsed by them, I guess. I philosophically align with them. I like Austrian economics. I pretty much, that's why I looked into them. Um, I've been a member of the Liberty Movement for a long time and I feel like they have kind of given me a home. Like I kind of found my people with them. And so um, that's kind of why I settled into the Libertarian Party at all. Um, I probably never would have even looked into the Libertarian Party uh, if it wasn't for the Mises Caucus. Um, as far as would I, would I uh, vote uh, based on that or, or whatever, I don't know. I wouldn't. No one, no one tells me kind of what to do and how to vote, to be quite honest. I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> um, if, my, if I philosophically didn't align with them tomorrow for whatever reason, I would find an, a new group, you know, that's just, how, that's just how it is. So yeah, to answer your question, I am endorsed by Music Caucus. All right. Thank you, Laura. Uh, Nicole Schultz. So I am not a member of, the, of any caucus. I have actually been into a few meetings because I've been invited into some meetings for like, I think I was in a radical caucus meeting once, a Pride caucus meeting. Um, I don't, I'm an individual. Um, so I'm not really a fit probably for any caucus. And um, as for anybody telling me what to do, my husband can't control me. You think somebody else could, <laughs> that's not happening. So no, nobody tells me how to vote. I vote my conscience. I vote what's right. If I'm too close to the subject, I abstain. I abstain in the John, um, John Wallenberger vote because I know him. I'm friends with him. It was not my place to make that vote. So I abstained. All right, Nicole, thank you. Uh... <sighs> Rob. Rob, shut up, Rob. Don't fucking... <laughs> I'll fucking ban everybody in this goddamn meeting. How dare you? Prove <laughs> it. One job. I can't. I don't even know how. <laughs> people. I'm struggling with this. <laughs> Rob, go. Uh, not only am I a member of the Mises Caucus, I am an organizer for the Pennsylvania Mises Caucus. Uh, me and a team of about five other people were the ones responsible for those 125 in-state members that got kept out of the last convention because that's how many people we recruited in about four months. 
Uh, since then, our, our team of Mises Caucus leaders has recruited, I'd probably say about three to 400 new members this year. Um, this is why I am affiliated with the Mises Caucus. We are people that caucus. We are not uh, some you know, uh, ideology group. Uh, I believe in them strongly and the job that they do. And uh, I think if everybody understands what it is that we're good at doing, uh, and, and we bring these people in and, and get them introduced into the party, uh, it's a good job that we're doing. Um, you know, I, I've been trying very hard to get everybody that I bring in involved into the LPPA, but then we put limits on the committees and how many people can get involved. So, you know, we're, we're trying to bring these people in and put them in, but, uh, you know, we're coming up with some obstacles. But um, uh, I, I would really like to point out that John Watermarker made a really great point about the Three role seconds. of the chair. I believe in a strong, a weak, a weak chair model. Uh, the chair should not vote. The chair should be a very uh, irrelevant person, except for the fact that they run meetings and really like a hall monitor. Um, so, uh, except for for um, you know tied votes, uh, I would really never be voting. Um, but if you need any uh, uh, proof to my credit of who my allegiance is left for when I vote, ask my uh, county uh, Allegheny County affiliate if they're satisfied with the job that I do for them and in voting on the LPPA board. Thanks. So. Robert, uh, I immediately hate this job now. It's getting harder for some reason. Uh, it's, it's, Sally, did you answer this? Yeah, right? Yeah, I did. I answered. Fuck. Is that it? Yeah, I, th I think everyone answered. Everyone answered, right? All right, yeah. great. We got to start limiting these responses to a minute. <laughs> this is fucking too long. We're going to make responses to a minute now. We have to. It's just going to be forever. If everyone's hands raised. God damn it. God damn it. All right. Uh, Eric Brown, you are actually at the next question, I believe. So I'm going to lower your hand and then put you on. No, I'm not going to put you on the screen. Yeah, I'm going to put you on the screen. Go ahead, sir. What is your question? Well, and I've been, I was tempted to actually take my hand back down. Um, and my question is, is directed to Sally because in her introductory remarks, if, and, and I'm, I'm struggling to remember exactly how she put it, and, I, and it, it caught me a little bit off guard and I wasn't really sure what she was, um, what she meant by it, but she talking about the central vice chair and, and um, uh, Sally, I don't know if you remember what you said. I, was, I, I guess I was gonna ask you to elaborate on it, but maybe okay. this isn't the form. Oh, I was going to say, hold, you know, we're going to get to that after this part. Okay. So hold that. So you guys can answer the questions at this. This, this is the third half. That's, this, that's, that's the entree part where uh, that's when I blow my brains out and you guys can just keep talking about stuff. But I'll be, I'll be dead. So <laughs> the next, <Okay>. uh, <laughs> next person to ask a question is Michael Mastercola. What's up, Brother Bear? You are on the screen nope oh there's no need for that i'm having a bad hair day all right sir then just talk it out what's up man? <laughs> this is this question's for the people seeking the vice chair positions okay what will you do differently than the current vice chair to grow the party okay the question is what will you guys do different than the current vice chairs to grow the party uh so first mr gets start your video stupid thank you uh weird looking adam nutter nope. or mark is whatever nope. you get Too it late. Okay, i'll sit down no you're yeah, right that's, bomb. Okay. <laughs> nope i took the l i took the l that's fine um so i don't want to you know come across as sounding like I'm, I'm demeaning any of the other vice chairs or anything because i'm certainly not um everybody has different lives different abilities and things and all that but what I would want to do is be accessible and be there. Um, like I said, with office hours, with hearing people's concerns, with having a group chat for uh, my region's chairs so that I could vote according to their will. Um, I want to go to counties and support the candidates that they nominate. Um, I ran my own mayoral campaign. I know how to door knock. I know how to raise money. I was surprisingly good at raising money, especially considering the level of the race. Um, 30 seconds. I, I want to. I want to be there, and I want to. I want to actually help. I want to. I want to go to these counties and help them with whatever they need, um, and uh, you know, be accessible. And as Eastern Vice Chair, I promise I will actually check my emails. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Joel. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Also, also, Adam Nutter's not funny. Fuck. 
I should have just not answered you. Why would I do that? I'm so stupid. I was like genuine, like what? What else could you add to this besides fucking roast? Idiot. I'm so dumb. That's what, you know what? That's on me too. I'm, I'm like the George Bush meme. Fucking fool me 18 times. Keep doing it. All right. Uh, fucking. Where's Anthony go? There he is. Anthony. <laughs> so for um, my answer to that, uh, a big thing I've observed is there's a lack of communication in the position. So in my daily job, I'm project manager. I work from home. <clears throat> I have to be accessible to my customers or I don't make money. I have a rule that if I know the answer, I get back to you within an hour. If I don't know the answer, I'm getting back to you within four with the answer or without it. Every chair in the Eastern region won't just have my email address. They'll have my cell phone number. I have plenty of free time. I have two teenage kids that couldn't give a crap what I'm up to. And my girlfriend and I love driving all over the place and uh, going on random adventures. So uh, if you haven't met us already, you will at some point because we're always looking for a road trip. I fucking, you know, I, you did that on purpose. I swear to God, I say 30 seconds and you stop on purpose. And then I, I go to do something else. And then I have to talk again. It's, Cause I know you're about to do something else. Yeah. Don't do that. Predictable. Okay. Be a good yes. friend. God damn. Can I, <laughs> can I steal 10? Can I steal 10 seconds of his no. extra 30? No. It's not to roast you. No, I don't believe you. That's boy who cried wolf. Your fault. Now we move on. <laughs> okay. No, what? Go ahead. I, I, no, I, I go ahead. In, what? In, in, in terms of having time to help these counties, by the way, I want to mention I work 12 hour shifts three days a week. So that leaves me with four full days where I can, I can be there and help these counties do stuff. Uh, so there you go. True. He just sends me naked pictures of himself instead during that time. I'd rather prefer that some, you know, more productive. Uh, Mr. Bill Cox. Uh, no offense to the other vice current vice chairs, but out here in the Western region, we probably have the best vice chair out of all the three and Sam Rob. Uh, as far as what Sam does, what I can do better is pretty much do what he does and take it to another level. Cause there's really not much to say about Sam. That's bad. He goes to the counties. He talks to people. My goal is to take what he does and then times it by five, get out to more counties, get more counties affiliated. Uh, I work night shift. I'm pretty available 24 seven. If you message me anywhere, people can attest. I answer pretty quick and it at all hours of the day. Uh, so it's take what Sam does and just turn it up a notch and do a little better. Boom. That's it. Bill Cox. Uh, Sam Rob has two first names. That's creepy. I don't, I don't trust it. I don't know why. I just can't trust somebody with two first names. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> right. The next on the list is uh, Freya Hassenmeyer. Yes. Um, I think what the position needs is someone like me who's had a business for a long time um, and can network. And, you know, in my business, I've been on, you know, I'm on call 24 seven, have been for over 15 years. I, I plan on treating this position the same way I treat my business. You call me, we discuss your problem uh, and network a solution. All right. Thank you, Freya. Uh, Eric, Eric do, we, do you answer? No. No, all right. So uh, I... The qualities a, a good uh, um, vice chair should have should be to be accessible, responsive, collaborative, communicative, um, and, and timely. Uh, and um, and so I'll strive to do those things. And uh, 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 and that's not a, um, a a criticism of the current vice chair, uh, but that's just the um, you know we want to. It's about party development and. Uh, County affiliate development, and so uh, those those qualities that I listed are, are the ones I think you have to really um, focus on to do that. So that's what I would do. All right, Eric, thank you, uh, Sally. I believe you are last. I think I've already done a good job of um, proving that I'm capable of being connected and responsive to issues, uh, especially with being on membership and convention planning is not really a whole lot of time to get things done. So when people have issues, um, I got to be on top of it. 
Uh, what I would do differently from the current CVC would be a uh, social media presence. Um, it's just gotta happen. Uh, I do There's really a... like a lot of the things that Sam Robb has done. So I think that I'd be pulling from him as well. Uh, I'd like to provide affiliates with resources and trainings that related to how to use the CRM, uh, Robert's rules and bylaws. And I'm also going to be asking affiliates to re review my performance so that uh, I can do a better job. Awesome. Thank you. All right. That's everybody for that question. Next question. Let's go to Constantine. I swear to Christ, if you, if you ask me to tell the priest joke, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so Constantine, what's your question? Man. Well, you kind of stole my thunder there. <laughs> no, so uh, this this is uh, this is for the uh, the the actual the chair candidates, and uh, I think since we're going to be doing uh, a lot of listening to the uh, the chairs over the next year, I think um, I think it'd be cool if we could hear them read from a news article in their most sensual chairing voice that we can get. So that uh, we can hear what we have to look forward to for the next year in the uh, the four hour long or twelve hour long conference calls that we'll be on. I'm not uh, opposed to that, but <laughs> I'm down for sexy time voice listening. But is Rob and John open for that? Is the question? I guess we have to ask them. I'm not far as Rob's up, but why the hell not? <laughs> <laughs> Rob, would you I've, like to see voice read something? I don't want a bunch of husbands getting mad at me. <laughs> Rob, you're helping get the party started here, okay? I'm, I'm really counting on you. All right. We don't, we don't have to. Wait, too, this, John. <laughs> this, implies, this implies that Rob has a voice that isn't sensual. It's true. Rob's voice is already sultry. That's a fair point. I'm like, I sound like Matthew McConaughey's dumb brother. <laughs> All right, so I guess no for the sexy voice time, but maybe maybe at convention time they'll do sexy voice time. All right, Constantine, uh, I'll read you a story anytime you like. Oh, I just found a good one. I could read about carbon monoxide poisoning. No, nah, we don't <laughs> classify that as good. Good to whom? Like carbon monoxide? Like is that a pro carbon monoxide? <laughs> no, no. Like read it. Like sec make it sexy. I don't know. Oh, I'm just going with it. I, I posted a brief article in the uh, in the chat. It was a, it's about the monkeys, and I think uh, I think we'd all like to hear about the monkeys. Again. No, we're not doing the monkeys. Um, all right, Constantine's done. So <laughs> before we go to the next question, yes. I actually enjoy carbon monoxide over Adam Nutter's comedy. Okay, that that one I think actually hurt the most. <laughs> that one might have been the one that hurt the most. Uh, all right, we're gonna go to oh Bonnie, Bonnie, your question. Hey, so it's not actually my question. I was sent a question by a member who does not feel comfortable um, being on the screen. Uh, the question that person's smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even comfortable being on the screen, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, or they're fed. Either they're smart or fed. <laughs> um, so they ask for all candidates, I assume, if you win this election, will you fulfill all the duties necessary and not complain about the time commitments? That's the question. To every, that was for everybody? I believe so. Okay. <sighs> Fuck yeah. Let's go through everybody's name again. Stop asking questions. Pick one person. <laughs> All right. Uh, Learn how to read. Well, Joel, you first. Oh, wait, I have a just, point of information real quick. Yes. Um, I sent you a list of all of the candidates that I wrote out for you to Me? refer to. Yeah. Um, oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. So that might be easier for you to use as a reference. Yeah, but, it is. Okay, Yay. okay continue, John. <laughs> Mark doesn't deserve you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're both awful. Um, however... Um, yes, I will be able to, I do believe, uh, be able to fulfill the duties of my role, uh, haha <laughs> duties. Um, I will not complain about the amount of time it takes. Um, if it becomes clear to me or my region chairs that I am not able to fulfill my duties effectively, I will happily resign and let somebody take the place who can. Thank you. Boom. Easy. Quick to the point. Anthony. Uh, I have plenty of free time, so I don't see time as an issue at all. 
Awesome. You know, I have an idea. I'm going to leave all the candidates on the screen. <laughs> Bill, <laughs> good. You're muted. How's that? There you uh, go. Time's not an issue. Um, I sat through nine hour board meetings. Uh, tonight, I actually took off work so I could be here for this. Uh, whatever time calls for through the party, I'm here for it. That's dedication. I would never miss comedy for this. All right, Freya, Freya you're up. Com yeah, time, comedy wouldn't miss you. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> time shouldn't be a problem. My son is taking over my business. Um, he's doing very well the past six months. And I plan on treating this position just the same way I treated I have treated my business. It's a it's a job. I'm running for it. I'm gonna put my all into it. All right. Thank you. Uh John. Sorry. Uh yeah, so um I have Your doc a five seconds not paying attention. Yeah, I, I have a counter question in response to that. Uh, will in turn uh, said person not complain about if uh, the chair sets a hard time limit on a meeting? Um, to truly answer the question, uh, we're all volunteers in this position, okay? So I think it is should be reasonable on an end of mutual respect of each other's time. Uh, as chair, I would set time aside to dedicate to this party, just as I need to set time for my family and for my business. And I would ask that everyone be mutually respectful of each other's time. All right. Uh, Eric. You know, I, I want to echo what John just said. Um, uh, I'm thoroughly committed to uh, the, you know, the role of uh, vice chair and to uh, uh, um, carry out the responsibilities to the best of my ability, but um, it, it is important we respect each other's time. So, thank you. All right. Uh, Greg. Yeah, um, I will be able to perform all the dues without a problem, um, and I definitely won't complain about it. I don't understand uh, how you volunteer for a position and then complain that it becomes too much. Um, so that's not what I'm here for. We're here to uh, make this party better and to grow, and uh, we'll make the time for it. Thanks. Laura. Did, did you say my name? I'm sorry. I did say your name. Yes. Sorry. You just said it so You're quick. I did you didn't make so a quick. deal about it like everyone else. Come on. I'm, so, okay. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Laura I'm just kidding. Hackenberg, <laughs> queen of the fucking central Pennsylvania. <laughs> Jesus oh <my> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I don't think the time will be an issue and I don't think I'm going to complain about it either. I think, uh, I think that won't be a problem. Awesome. Uh, oh, I can't aim more spotlights. So Joel, you're out. Cause I hate you, Nicole. I am currently making all the time that I possibly can for not only treasure, but for the audit. Um, I think what people forget is that, the audit typically there it's not we don't typically do an audit i think we should be doing an audit every two years um because that's just how it should be there should be an audit every year we audit everything else every year why don't we audit this every year um did the audit take up a lot of my time yes is the audit still taking up a lot of my time yes but along with um everybody else i think we need to be mutually respectful of each other's times um, I think long business meetings where we're doing things that we shouldn't be doing, it should be doing in committees, I think will take care of the time issue for a lot of people. And I think if it's structured the way it's supposed to be structured, I don't think time is an issue for anyone. Boom. All right. Rob. Time, time is a, um, time is a, a very precious and, and scarce thing. And it's something that none of us have enough of. Um, I, I value my time highly and I don't have much spare of it, but I can't think of a better reason in using my time than for bringing the message of Liberty to everybody that I can. And the only thing that you'll ever hear me complain of is that we're not doing enough. Not that I have too much to do. So thanks. Nice. Uh, Sally. 
Uh, I'm already here all the time, such as like all of us. <laughs> so it's not going to be an issue. Awesome. Uh, I have a question that I I have to ask everybody because it's, it's been asked to me multiple times now to ask this question. And this is a real question. Not kidding. Sally, do you prefer turkey bacon or bacon? Bacon. Rob? Bacon. Nicole? Bacon in an air fryer. Eric? Bacon. Greg? Turkey bacon isn't real bacon. Goddamn right it isn't. Laura? Obviously bacon. Obvious. John? Pork or beef bacon. It, it doesn't matter. Oh, it your does choice. matter. I mean, your choice <laughs> in this in this hypothetical, I guess. <laughs> uh, All right. Beef, pork, then turkey. <laughs> okay, fair. Uh, Freya? Honey, I grew up on a pig farm. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, we have to have to kick some of you guys out to add others. Uh, Anthony, I'm Argentine. When you gringos cook turkeys, we cook pigs. So any excuse to cook a pig, I'm with it. So bacon and everything else attached to it. To be honest, <laughs> you're damn right, Joel. Turkey bacon is an abomination, and just like birds, is not real. Um, mm -hmm. Any other kind of bacon is acceptable. <laughs> Correct. Is that everybody? Did we chime in the bacon? Oh, Bill. Didn't get me, yeah. Uh, bacon. Thick cut bacon. Good. No one here's a communist. I'm proud of everybody. You guys passed the test. Congratulations. <laughs> no one's a commie. Yay. We all did it. <laughs> we all did it. All right. We have one more question I, I that looks like we have in the chat. Um, so, Michael. Nope. We have two in the chat now. And I have a list, so you can let Adam go first. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> that didn't sound good. He's like, I have a list. <laughs> I'm going to have a fucking problem with a lot of you people. He's like, get ready. <laughs> All right, Adam, what's your question? Uh, I have a list, too. <laughs> what the fuck, guys? Do you guys not um, want to play video games or watch something or eat? They have nothing <laughs> better like? to do. Is this I'm like here for liberty, man. What the all right. Uh, uh, so here's my question. Here's my question for the uh, vice chairs. Do you um, do you think we should continue to be voting for vice chairs as an entire party, or each vice chair should be voted on by the region they represent? Uh, uh, Anthony, go, you go first. I think the ideal would be everyone being able to vote, but I understand the mechanics of that are a little bit harder and as we all mentioned this is a volunteer position and our time's valuable so i definitely see the value in each region voting for their regional position all right anthony thank you uh sally that is an interesting question and something that i've never thought about before um i think that do you want to come it's, back to you? Uh, yeah, it's like too no, new of an idea for me to even we'll wrap my head you. around yet. We'll come back to you. Thanks. Uh, Joel? If it, if it helps just to make it simpler for people, basically, I'm in Eastern region. Should I be able to vote, vote for Bill Cox or should I not be able to vote for Bill Cox or whoever's in a different region than me? There you go. Uh, Sally, yes. <laughs> yeah, so I think that um, we work with a lot of people from all over the state. So you might work with bill cox on a lot of stuff on on your subcommittees and know things about him and his work habits to be able to put a vote towards him when he's not even on your side of the state so yeah i, I think it should still be statewide all right uh joel i don't have an issue with it being statewide um i would probably lean towards uh regionally um i mean I might know things about a senator in New York, but I can't vote for Senate in New York either. Um, I think it would possibly be a time saver as well to just have the regions uh, kind of caucus together and vote for their uh, vice chair on prop simultaneously, essentially. And uh, that'll actually save up a lot of time at convention as well. But like I said, I'm fine with the whole convention doing it as well, but I like regionally better. Freya? Yeah, I'm pretty much on the same page with Joel. Um, you know, it works the way it is, and there's some value in the whole state, you know, voting for 
people that can get along, but you're representing, you know, in this, in my case, the Eastern area. So they should be the ones voting for you. All right. Great. Thank you. Uh, Eric. Uh, yeah, actually, I thought about this just the other day uh, because I wasn't sure uh, what what it was, uh, what the answer to that was. Um, and I, I pretty much surmised it was going to be the, the whole state voting for each chair. But um, my thought is that it's probably more appropriate to have the uh, each region, uh, the people from that region voting for that region's vice chair. That's that's my personal opinion of it. All right. And last but not least, Mr. Bill Cox. I support regional votes. Uh, first, it saves time at convention. That, and then secondly, that allows the people who you're actually representing vote for their representative at the as their vice chair. Short and sweet. Also, I heard your real Pennsylvania come out. You said votes. Votes. <laughs> I'm a New Yorker, so fuck you guys. All right. Uh, all right, so Adam, is that that was that, I guess that was all the vice chairs, right? That was running, so that should have answered your question. Okay, cool. Uh, Mike, go ahead, man. Okay, this is for everybody. Okay, I'll add them. I'll, I'm going to do the vice chairs first, and then I'll add the treasurers, secretary, yeah. and, and chairs. So that's how we're going to do this. Sure, man. Your right. your thing. Here's the question: Do you support a bylaw change making LPPA convention delegates Pennsylvania residents only? All right, we're going to go reverse this time. Bill. Yes. Quick. <laughs> Eric. Yes. Brett. Yes. Joel. Enthusiastically, yes. <laughs> Mr. Portillo. Yes. And Sally. When we were smaller, it uh, made sense to let out-of-state voters vote, uh, but a lot of states have things going in the right direction, and uh, we don't need to do that anymore. Uh, Good answer. Greg? Yes. Uh, Laura? Uh, I do support it um, overall. I recognize that there could be some nuance for um, afforded to people who own property in, or businesses in the state but live out of the state. But um, overall, I think probably yes. Cool. Okay, uh, Nicole. There used to be a reason for it. There isn't a reason for it now. Um, there could be stipulations made for people who have businesses or who have rental property, but there, that's a nuance that needs to, it's, it's a path that needs to be walked to see where it leads before it's you know, made official. Um, nobody else has a right to say what we do in PA with our party if you don't live in PA. All right, uh, John. I'm actually working on a bylaw change proposal to address that myself. Um, I do believe that that needs to be changed, not only uh, just a resident of Pennsylvania, but for at least a year and a registered libertarian for at least one year. Uh, Rob. Um, yeah, this, this is something that, uh, uh, while there was good reason for it in the past, uh, we've grown the need, uh, we've grown from the need to just take anybody who will show up and we have, uh, you know, enough people now where we need to get Pennsylvania off and on its own. So yes, I, I'm enthusiastically for, for making a residence only. Uh, Mike, is that, is that it? We have more, right? Yeah, I'll ask them later. I mean, I, I imagine we're going to be doing more of these. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so I'll, I'll <laughs> if ask. You guys them I'll do another. I'll do more if you guys liked it. <laughs> I would love you to. Uh, here's one for everybody. How will you work together with membership committee to coordinate statewide membership drives? Okay, so I don't know if you guys heard that. But you said, how would you work with membership committee to organize statewide membership drives? So we'll go with uh, we'll go with the was it, you said that was it for everybody or this is the chairs, Mike. Um, everybody. I mean, kind of really involves everybody. Okay. Uh, we'll go with the chairs first. Uh, we're running. Um, John. 
cut me mid M&M. Ha ha. Say that oh, one are more you time. The sex, are you eating the sexy one or the not sexy one? I was actually important? about to eat the sexy one. Nice. No, <laughs> it's, it's a green one or is that the, not the sexy one anymore? I don't even know. Well, I like the brown. I, I like the brown one. <laughs> Who's that the worst one? Who really likes the brown one? Whoa. <laughs> but these are also the brownie ones, so. All right. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Now we're off topic. Uh, what was this? I want to I heard the question correctly. What will yeah, you do um, to work with membership? Did I hear that? Yeah. What would you do to work with local membership to organize statewide drivers like committee uh, to organize membership committees and stuff like that to gain membership? Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, a lot of that work does fall on the committees. I mean, the you know the chair. Uh, in, in that case, I feel is more of a guidance role. So I would, you know, work to help mediate any maybe differences within the committee individually um, to try and find a balanced road for us to go through that. But I, I do strongly feel that the committees uh, are where the legwork needs to start going if we're going to start really hitting the ground. Rob? So I will, um, as I said earlier, what uh, the way that I would help this as chair in, in the role of how I think the chair should be operating is to make sure that we're holding our committees accountable for the work that they should be doing by requiring them to be submitting their monthly reports and by giving their reports every month. That way we know if these committees, particularly, you know, membership or, or what, you know, what whichever committee that may lie on is doing the roles that we expect them to be doing. Uh, um, if they're not, then, then at least we know when they're bringing their reports to us if, if they're getting these things done and then we can address it going about it that way. So as chair, that's how I would help the, these uh, membership drives is by assuring that the committees are, are, are fulfilling their, their roles by keeping them accountable um, at the meetings and also by stressing the, the local affiliate um, heavy um, approach that I believe that we should take. Our, our committees, our state committee should be helping our local committees in that's their membership true. drives. Um, you know, uh, letting them know how to, how to, how it works, what to, what to do and, and the, the successes and failures that they've had. So that's how I think the chair could help with these membership drives. Uh, Bill. Uh, as Western vice chair, I think there's a few things we could do. Um, I think that relies on counties to work with membership committee. We, a big thing we could do to help facilitate membership drives statewide would be to, as we get more counties affiliated, that'll give us more opportunities to hold local events whether it's at fairs, uh, community uh, days, we can use those events to get new signups and bring more people into the party by putting the message of liberty out in front of people more often. I think we see a lot of that from some counties, and I think a lot of counties can take take lessons from some counties and do more of that. Uh, thank you. Um, Anthony? I think, uh, as I said before, issue coalitions are a big deal for me. I think that's a great way to reach out to people aside from just reaching out to the you know registered libertarians who haven't been involved in a long time, but getting out in the community and getting around groups of like-minded people that might not be libertarian is a great way to help drive membership. Um, you know, I, I referenced the don't tread on Philly stuff before, but they set a great example for that. So I would kind of take a page out of their book and follow the same path or a similar uh, one. Eric. No, I, I would uh, take my lead from the membership committee and, and uh, do my best to uh, uh, work with them to uh, uh, execute whatever strategy they might have in mind uh, for that. Uh, um, uh, going to events, I think, is a, is a good idea. And uh, but I also think that, um, you know, good old fashioned door knocking is is uh, is a you know, it's it's um, it, it's uh, time consuming and and it's uh, not always the most encouraging. But you know, that's probably the the way you're going to actually reach the most people. Um, uh, who would who would, you know, if you have a good voter registration list in front of you, uh, that would be a good, uh, I think, an effective way to do it. Um, so um, that's what I have to say about that. Uh, Freya. Um, well, I'm, I'm big on events. Uh, the problem is the first event we did here in Pike and Wayne County was kind of a clusterfuck. Um, we had no plan. We had no material until the last minute to hand out. 
no talking points, no, you know, this stuff needs, it was a mess. It was a mess. Everyone's running, you know, scrambling at the last minute. I'd like to put together a model for events um, to help people with their talking points and, you know, organization. Uh, Joel. Yeah, the simple answer is I would do whatever uh, the membership committee asked me to do. Um, it, uh, there, there are multiple universities within an hour of me um, that I assisted another organization in with in-person membership uh, drive, drive once, and it was very successful. Um, it'd be really easy to get one to two people out there and you know, sign people up and spread the message of liberty. Um, the Mises Caucus actually had an event at an axe throwing oh, place down here in downtown Stroudsburg. Um, that was successful. Um, there's a lot of places to have events and do in-person outreach um, at universities and restaurants and stuff like that around here. So I think those would be great and whatever else the committee wanted us to do. Sweet. Uh, Sally. Uh, so there's um, a bit of a disconnect from what membership committee does and what the party thinks we should do um, or what we are doing. Uh, membership committee at this stage, we do a lot of the IT side of things, the connecting people with the CRM data, um, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that our, our affiliates are able to uh, access that information for who's in their their county and getting them connected and and showing them how to send the emails and log the activities and and things like that um, ah, <laughs> um so really uh, affiliate support which is manned by tim mcmaster and uh, the event committee which i don't think has really evolved into anything quite yet are the committees that 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 should be spearheading those um, types of things. And I can tell you that from, uh, Tim McMaster might still be here, uh, affiliate support is, is, is working on being able to connect seasoned affiliates with new affiliates Time. so that we can, <laughs> oh, I feel like Jeopardy. I wanted to buzz you with something. I don't know why. I'm not mad. I just wanted to be like, time. <laughs> this felt like power. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Bill, real quick. Yeah, you wanted to um, yeah. clear something up? Uh, yeah. As far as mem statewide membership drives, I think one thing we can do is improve our system of when new members sign up for the LPPA to figure out a better way for vice chairs and county chairs to get notifications when they sign up. Whenever someone signs up for the party, we need to hit those people within hours of them signing up that we're kind of the best way to turn in those new signups into active volunteers by reaching out to them quickly and getting them involved as quickly as possible. I have plans to do that. Hopefully if I get elected vice chair and even if not, we can get those plans enacted. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Uh, fuck, did it go? <laughs> uh, Fred, did you go for Yes. Eric, you went. My brain's fried. No, Greg, Greg, Greg deal. You go. All right. So on top of what some of these other uh, guys and girls said, uh, we've got uh, an opportunity. We, there's a lot of other freedom style coalitions that we can be getting ourselves involved with. Young Americans for Liberty. Um, I know out here in the Western side with uh, John Rasso is putting together um, a great uh, coalition of, of people who are like homesteading and doing things like that on their own. Um, we could be getting into those types of groups and talking to them and trying to get those people because those are really like-minded people to us um, that we could be, you know, getting a base where we maybe previously didn't have before. Thanks. Uh, Laura. I think in a treasurer role, um, I would be most helpful uh, doing things like creating budgets for the affiliates so that they can work on membership stuff and working with other committees to uh, fundraise and uh, focus on to focus on getting more people into the party. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I don't like how Anthony's fucking profile picture looks like he's a low level member of like Tony Escobar's car cartel. Like, what the fuck? Who is he think? Who do you think he is? <laughs> He's not fucking cool. He looks like shit. I, I think. I think that's racist. I, I'm pretty sure that's racist. That's fine. 
right. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, Nicole. So as treasurer, um, let's face it, there's no treasurer without membership. Um, cause without membership, there's no money to budget for anything. Um, I think York and Lancaster lead the PA on doing events and getting out there. I'm part of the community outreach for Lancaster and for York. We go out and we do a lot of events. We're out at parades. We're out at um, different car shows. We're, we're, we're wherever we can get us in. Um, my business, I'm at Thursdays. shows every weekend. So I'm out there in the community. Um, I think we need to work together to get more people in. And once we do, everything else will fall into place. But I think knowing what we know in York and Lancaster and making it so successful, it makes it easier as treasurer to help everybody else. Nicole, thank you. Adam, put your fucking hand down. <laughs> I swear to God, I'll choke you out. <laughs> I will break all the NAPs. Yes, John. I didn't think you were actually going to call me. <laughs> well, well, you were raising your hand. Mic. It was an instinctual response. <laughs> I it don't was. know why. Well, I had the mic. Uh, does anyone recognize this guy? Uh, he looks look... like he looks like a, a, a molester of something. He looks like he molests. Looks like some <laughs> looks like some uh, nerd up there running for EBC. Chuck Mangione, which man. A, which is an insult to this guy, but yeah. <laughs> I, just thought... I don't know who Chuck Mangione is. Am I, I trash for not knowing who that is? Oh, he was the you should great, know who greatest. That uh, what the what, what Flugel. horn did he play? It's Flugel, the Flugel horn. Yeah. Okay, you know what? I'm not trash. You guys are trash for knowing what that is. I <laughs> was, fuck you. It's crazy. I'm a Flugel horn. You said you made that up store. right How now. Are you, fucking, not this? Yeah, you're, are you fucking with me? And I'm I'm a child of the '80s. Who doesn't know? <laughs> I uh, was born in '86. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> Adam Adam Nutter Adam Nutter's favorite uh, instrument to play is. Oh, what happened? I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> it's crazy. His favorite's the skin flute. Okay. <laughs> All right. I sell those. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't go to John's shop. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> or maybe, maybe you go there. I don't know. <laughs> I just now I just have like a envision just a bunch of just cut off dicks. There's like, one right like, up like there. That's like on the shelf. It's right up there above my finger. <laughs> All right. Uh, Adam, <laughs> what's your question? Uh, we're about to have a vacant executive director position. Would you support filling that position? And if you do support filling that position, what would you do differently this time? Who is this for? Everybody. Fuck. Well, how is that relevant to whatever? Okay. It's very relevant. <laughs> to, no, I'm into like a treasurer. How does the treasurer choose that? Oh, I guess they do. That's like their job. Because right. everybody right. votes. Right. Right. The right. treasurer right. works hand in hand delegated. with the executive director. You got it. I walked it back. I realized immediately after I said it. I forgot. <laughs> right. I, I, I have motion to attack. remove Adam Nutter as our board rep hey, next I month. have <laughs> balls and I said I fucked up. I immediately regretted saying it. I got it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sally, go. I'm someone that um, has worked with the current executive director for a while since being roped into all the crazy. Um, so yeah, the executive director position definitely needs to be filled. There should not be a lapse at all. Um, so I think that it would be best to start looking at things as soon as possible. Um, I, I don't know. We need, we need a professional, um, someone who we're allowed to pay and they don't get in trouble for being paid. Thanks. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's switch it up here. Let's go, Greg. Yeah, um, I'm in favor of, of filling the position uh, if it's the right person. Uh, I think we have to make sure we're doing our due diligence uh, to make sure that we're we're uh, hiring somebody that aligns with where we're going as a party and what, what we're doing and where we kind of want to go forward. And I think that's going to be the most important thing. I, I think the executive director has a very important role, but it's it, it'd be more important for us to find that right person. And, you know, that may take some time to, to, to get the right person in there. Thank you. Uh, Nicole. So I currently work hand in hand with the executive treasure or the executive director. It is a position that is needed treasurer and executive director because they handle money. The, the executive director is bringing in um, funds from outside sources and the treasurer obviously is handling the money because these are two positions that are very important to the growth of the LPPA. 
these positions need to be vetted properly. You need to hire people who actually can do the job, that know the job, know the direction that we're going in and can get us there. I think the audit, again, will show that in the past, we've made bad decisions as a group. And those decisions need to change. We need to actually hire and do it correctly, have a screening process, ask a lot of questions, and then pick the best person for the job. Thank you. Uh, I have to go to the bathroom. So can Bonnie or Joel call people until I get back? Please. No, it's about you. time. It's about time Bonnie does something. <laughs> all right, I'll be back. Yeah. All right. I think Bonnie Bonnie. deserves a break after all the meetings that she has to deal with. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, um, so I'm gonna admittedly say that I, I was not keeping track of who has already spoken on this. Um, so the chairs don't need to go. I know that. So okay, Rob, have at it. Laura still needs to go too. I think. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you want to go first? Yes. Oh yeah, Rob. go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, I believe that the executive director is a important role. I think a good place to start would be having a, an executive director who is not the uh, one of the main uh, people behind a, a artificial caucus d designed to um, take down half of the membership of this party. Um, I have an idea for who would make a great um, executive director, and I would love to bring that to people. But until um, he agrees, I will not say his name, John Rasso. Um. Uh, yeah, I think that'd be a good place to start. Thanks, Rob. Um, Laura? Uh, to be honest, I hadn't really thought about not filling um, it. So I don't know what the implications of that would be. I'm not, I'm not familiar also with the, you know, I, I guess the person has a contract, obviously, because they're an employee. I'm not really familiar with the intricacies of the contract and um the job itself so i would i would consider it either way um i'd have to learn more about it to say thank you uh bill did you speak i have not yet okay. uh the executive director is definitely an important position that we need to fill i don't think we should rush into it though the board the bod needs to do their due diligence in selecting the right person for that job and vetting them properly um the executive director can do a lot of good for the party. We need to make sure we get the right person there for that. And I think that may take some time to make sure we get that person who fits right. Thanks, Bill. Um, who else did not speak on this? Don't Eric. Know, so. Eric? I kind of want to echo what Laura said about it. Um, I want to say I wasn't I hadn't really thought about this at all. I've, I've been listening to everybody's comments and, and, um, uh, and I, 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 res I respect what I'm hearing that people think it's an important position and that, you know, and that we should fill it and, and be very careful and, uh, about who we pick. And so I'm inclined to go along with that, but I, I haven't really thought about it enough to say adamantly one way or the other. Thanks, Eric. Freya? Yeah, it, I mean, executive director is an important role in any organization and needs to be filled. Um, but like most of us said, it, it's, it can't be willy-nilly. We have to vet whoever it is thoroughly and, you know, have a list of qualifications, you know, necessary you know, do it right. Thanks, Freya. Um, Anthony, did you speak already? Oh, uh, I did not. I'll basically echo what everybody else said. I also think that it's important that the people in the party know where, how that money's spent. So I think transparency in that department is important as well. Thank you. Um, John, did you speak? I did not know. Okay. Uh, yes, absolutely. We have seen over the last two years what uh, an executive director can do for this party, and we would be stupid as all hell to not put someone in 
But of course, that means we have to properly vet. We have to make sure they know the laws surrounding uh, FEC regulations and state financial regulations to make sure that they can work hand in hand with the treasurer and the appropriate committees. Uh, I think if I may throw out there, it would behoove the next executive uh, board to beg and request that we keep on uh, you know, Kevin temporarily until we can find a suitable replacement. Otherwise, as you will see, uh, you know, I believe it was the last executive director's report, uh, the one month he took on vacation, donations were stagnant. We need to have someone and we need to uh, make sure that they can fill those big shoes. Bonnie, can I have just one second to throw out numbers that people probably don't know because they don't have the treasure information? Um, sure, sure. Just, just on the growth. So in, in 2016, before we had an executive director, the amount of money we brought in might have been 35,000, 45,000. I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but th so I'm going from memory. Last year with an executive director, we brought in $144,000. That's the most we've ever brought in as a um, party and you can, and, and, and I'll show it with graphs in a few weeks when you, when we do that report, but you'll see that we have jumped drastically since the executive director position has been put in. Um, so I know a lot of people don't know those numbers. They don't see it because you guys don't see the annual report and that needs to change. Um, and also you guys don't see the state report unless you go online and look it up. And um, as soon as I'm done with the state report, I will send that state report to the bot list so everybody can see what I report to the state. And that will show you the numbers that most of you don't get to see because the monthly reports don't really go over the total amount, if that makes sense. Bonnie, where are we at? Thank you, Paul. So I think I don't think we've heard from um, Joel or Greg in this in this. Uh... Okay, let's go. Let's go, Greg. I talked already about it. Okay, let's go, Joel. <laughs> Sorry, Greg. Yeah, um, I liked John's idea of keeping Kevin on temporarily, and I'd ask him, but he blocked me on Facebook. Um, but I do <laughs> think it's uh, I do think the role of executive director is very important, and that we should fill it as quickly as we can, while also doing our you know obviously due diligence. Um, we need someone who has the right credentials and background to raise the money for the party. Um, and we, like Rob said, we need one that can work with all libertarians and be truly caucus neutral. Thank you. All right. So that's the question there. So the question is done. Everyone answered. Okay. Uh, let's go. Mike. All right. So Mike already answered, asked the question. We'll come back to you, Mike. Uh, let's go to Mr. Michael Heiss. You're up, dude. You uh, just got a quick question for everybody. Uh, what do you feel the role of the judicial committee is? And would you abide by their rulings, uh, even if you personally didn't agree with them, assuming they're not like blatantly outside of the bylaws? Good question. Uh, Great let's go, question. Great question. Let's go with, uh, let's go with, uh, my God, my fucking brain just froze on names. Anthony, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a lot of the mechanics of that stuff is uh, what I'm still learning, but my understanding of, of the Judicial Committee is that they deal with non-compliance issues. I think those are pretty cut and dry. The bylaws and Constitution are what they are, so we should stick to them. We should honor their rulings, and, uh, and that's pretty cut and dry for me. You're muted, Boomer. I'm muted. <laughs> I'm the idiot. Nicole. <laughs> okay. Treasure is one of those ones that has a unique position where her ass can go to jail literally. So if it's not breaking a federal law and the JC tells me I have to do something and it's not past our bylaws, obviously I will abide by it. However, if you're asking me to do something that would put me physically at risk, I do not look good in prison orange, 
I will not be doing that. And I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we would like to see Joel gets in prison though. Cause he just needs to be away from society. He's the only person I, I, I voted that for. Joel, go put some orange on. Yeah. yeah he's trash. Uh, he should be there. Give information. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Greg. Sure. Well, it's, I think that we elect the judicial committee for a reason, right? So there's, as long as it's not violating any laws or violating our bylaws, I don't see why we wouldn't be following their rulings. All right, let's go with Mr. Waldenberger. Well, ideally and realistically, um, I don't think that the judicial committee should exist in the current uh, format that it is, but you can reach out to me personally if you want to, uh, more details. I'm working on a bylaw change for that as well. Um, along the lines of what Nicole said, as long as it doesn't break any uh, laws that can send someone to prison, I can see that. But also, on the other hand, the Judicial Committee needs to be used as it is uh, stated in the bylaws and as a board of appeals, meaning if there is an issue, bring it to the committees and to the board first to deal with before 20, 20 going seconds. to the judicial committee. All right. Thank you. Uh, Freya. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm voting, you know, I, for the board and I'm going to follow what they, you know, decide on. Um, if I have an issue, I'll bring it up, you know, through the, you know, our set process, but you know, this is, this is what I'm volunteering for. This is, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm not, you know, going to be some rogue, you know, that's. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Eric. I don't know that I have a real helpful answer on this one, but, um, cause I hadn't really thought about it, but, uh, I mean, I would certainly try to work with the executive board and, and uh, the, or, the organization structure throughout the organization structure to, um, to work through any issues and, and, and resolve them that way. And then, um, you, know, you know, obviously respecting that there's a, a judicial committee and, and it has a role and, and I would um, be fine with following, you know, uh, 20 seconds. Following, following that role. All right, Eric, thank you. Uh, Bill. Uh, the executive, the judicial committee is ex elected by the body of the delegation convention. Uh, as long as their ruling is not outside the law, I don't see why there's any reason we shouldn't abide by it. The judicial committee uh, handles noncompliance. So if somebody's breaking the bylaws, uh, policy manual, or the constitution, we should ha uh, listen to what the judicial committee is telling us. All right, Laura. Uh, you know, I'm not 100% um, familiar with w the bylaws in terms of the Judicial Committee, um, but as long as they are following the bylaws and the, and the um, policy manual and all that, I think that my opinion on it would be to that the role is to do exactly that. Um, as a member of the board, I would support the Judicial Committee's uh, decisions uh, we elect them. We change, we have an opportunity to change the bylaws every year. So, um, I think that's my opinion on it. Thank you. All right. Uh, I believe Sally is the last person to go. Oh no, Sally and Rob, right? Sally, Sally and Rob. Let's go Sally and Rob. Um, so, uh, Laura, I appreciate what you said because I also feel like, I very much don't understand a lot of the confusion around the JC. Um, Michael Heiss recently had a myriad of questions for the JC, and I found that to be a very helpful meeting because it seemed like there's a lot of answers that a lot of people would like to have. Um, so I don't, I don't understand like really how the rulings work and exactly. because I've been told that there's like an appeals process and things are done out of order. And, um, 
I really would like it if the JC did like some clarification or if we had like a committee that did like the did that worked on issues or helping us to solve these problems that arise from people just not knowing the process. Um, that's where a lot of this fighting comes from. And I, I think that'd be very helpful to, to nail all that down. Thank you. All right. Uh, and then uh, Rob. Yeah. So what I think really what this question comes down to is the issue that we, we were faced with here this year, and it is whether the judicial committee can and uh, offer advisory opinions, which Sally, that's basically what you were asking is, is to this explanation of what are the rules really? We elect the JC for a reason, and these are the people that we should turn to for things of clarification on the rules. If we break these things up in the board meetings, they're just going to end up just like all the other board meetings do and, uh, you know, uh, devolve into debate and, you know, everybody's going to have a voice in it, but we elect our JC. There's longstanding precedent that the, that the appeals board or the appeals committee of a board of of directors is the one to go to for advisory opinions there this is clear clear cut the the rulings of the jc are, are the very proper way for things to go to this way we can all know the rules that we're playing by and if you know if you don't like the way that a jc is interpreting things then you can elect a new one next year but the jc is the absolute one the absolute correct party to go That's to for advisory right. opinions this is who we should come to to say hey what are the rules we all operate on and then we can stop all the bickering about how we're supposed to do stuff let's ask the jc let's get their opinion let's move forward and then if we need to address it we address it with bylaw changes or, or with new jc in the next year thank you nice okay uh all right that's everybody for that question Yes. <laughs> Looking at her, like blank faces at me, like you, you should know, idiot. I'm like, I don't know. All right, uh, let's go with uh, what, uh, Sally. Your hand is your hand raised on purpose for a question. I'm sorry. No, I do things. <laughs> okay. So no, I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. Cool. So then, okay, Mike, you, you still asked already. I just want to go with uh, Morgan Bogus from Butler. What up, dude? What's up? Um, so this one is for the vice chair candidates. So this was briefly touched on in the candidate introductions, I believe, and I'd like uh, specifics on this. Uh, so what will be your strategy for developing new county affiliates that are not established yet? Okay, let's go with Eric. I am very sorry. I was, um, I was looking at something and I didn't catch that question. I apologize. Go ahead, Morgan. You, you ask it again. Yeah. So I was wondering uh, what the strategy uh, all the vice chair candidates were uh, imploring in developing new county affiliates that are not established yet. Well, I think uh, one uh, first step would be to uh, get a copy of the voter registration rolls in that county and see who's registered libertarian, and begin reaching out to some of those folks. Uh, that would probably be my first step to, you know, to try to get a toehold there. And then, um, uh, and uh, I think, um, I think it was Sally, and I apologize if somebody else was the one who said it, uh, talking about uh, social media, uh, um, using, using that as a, as a tool to Very reach exactly. out. But um, so that would be my approach. All right. Uh, Bill. Yeah, uh, as Western Vice Chair, I have a plan in place for this already. Um, the biggest thing we need to do is realize that there's going to be a lot of legwork that needs to be put in by the vice chairs to get counties that aren't affiliated affiliated. The biggest thing we can do is uh, utilize our CRM data. We have lists of all of the registered libertarians in these parties in these counties that aren't affiliated. We take that data, we can phone bank, we can gather groups of volunteers who will phone bank with us to reach out to the members of that county find the people who are willing to put in the time and effort to start the committees for those counties and go from there. Uh, once we do that, we get those counties started. Seconds. We get them hosting their own meetings and that'll bring more people out into their county meetings and uh, grow their affiliates larger. Nice. Uh, Freya. Um, yeah, actually I've been working on this in Pike County because you know Pike and Wayne are combined right now. And Pike actually has the second most registered libertarians of any county, but no, you know, no affiliate of its own. Um, so I got the voter registration list. Uh, you know, it's a matter of, you know, cold, you know, reaching out to people and talking to them. A lot of them don't even know we seconds. exist. You know, a lot of, a lot of people that are, you know, 
consider themselves libertarians don't even know you know the organization exists i didn't know until adam reached out to me you know four years ago now all right uh sally Getting affiliates started um, doesn't have to be super difficult. Um, voter registration, utilizing the CRM. Whoa. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, utilizing the CRM, utilizing Facebook. Uh, really, you just need to start with three people. You get you get three people in a county. You can do an event. You can get it in the paper. You can blast it on social media. Uh, you can you can start looking up people on Facebook using, uh, you know, your resources and connecting with them, you know, where they're at. Uh, 30 seconds. We make it more complicated than it has to be. Thank you. All right. And then Anthony. So um, and I'll echo some of what Bill said about the, the phone banking. I think boots on the ground is a great thing. Uh, getting people to actually knock on the doors and talk to those people who are registered libertarians. And I personally am an events guy. So if it's not, hey, let's find a place out there where we can put together a social event that we can get people out to, then let's find events that are going on and figure out how we can participate in those events and make our presence known. In the East, we have it uh, a, a little bit easier because we have less affiliates to uh, remaining. I think we're down to two. It's Wayne and Sullivan, if I remember correctly, off the top of my head. So apart from that, our, our focus will mostly be growth. Awesome. That's all the chairs. I know, Joel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Adam, how many times are you going to do this to me, man? Second time wasn't a bit. First time was. Second time, I generally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, like everybody said, uh, voter registration and, and phone banking and, and, and things like that would be what I would go to, to, to for the uh, unincorporated counties right now. Um, get people interested in, and walk them through it. And I think as a former vice chair in Monroe and current chair, I would be able to help them with those, uh, help them actually get set up and then through the process of having meetings and all that. And somebody mentioned helping them with their social media. There I happen to be a so social media director for several campaigns as well as for the state of Pennsylvania. So I'd like to think I could also help those counties with their social media game. Nice, nice, nice. All right, thank you, sir. All right. Uh, excuse me. Let's move back on to Michael for another question. Michael. Yeah, so this question is for our current treasurer. Um, hello, candidate Schultz. Do you support cryptocurrency to pay for LPPA dues? Okay, so I am not very knowledgeable on cryptocurrency um i know a few people that are are like you and adam and other people um i think there's an avenue for it i don't think it should be the whole thing and also the endowment fund that we have i think it sh we shouldn't have all of our eggs in one basket i think that endowment fund should be separated into different things not just crypto but maybe stocks other areas i think we need to be more knowledgeable on where we put our money and how we get our money all right uh oh adam yeah i i'm thinking about running for treasure and actually requiring that all of our dues be paid with nfts oh yeah that's fair we all pay with the monkey faces or the eight faces whatever the fuck they're called yeah that's fair you I just want that. to make my job harder joel i back that all right, uh, Adam, go for it, Brother Bear. All right, so I'm going to do a two-part question, and my second question depends on the first one, but the first one is simple. Does anybody have to leave? Because I don't want to keep bugging people if we don't have everybody here to give equal time. I, mean, I, I have, have no life or family. <laughs> I have surgery tomorrow, and I need to eat at some point before midnight. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was going to say, I no, think you're supposed it, to eat before surgery. <laughs> if, it, if it pleases everyone, um, how about we do... A stop at 10 o'clock. No, eight okay. hours. Eight no. hours. No, I refuse. I this is a test to see how you'll do I with second that refusal. I have chocolate covered strawberries to make for a grocery store tomorrow. 
I just for want to tonight, eat for tomorrow. I'm very hungry. No, <laughs> no, today. Neil, not a hard stop. Not a hard stop. I have trauma from that term. Can, <laughs> that's what she said. Uh, can, I would like to suggest that we maybe do this again. Um, I wouldn't you know, mind continuing this at a later date. I wouldn't mind Adam gets $5,000 for this. <laughs> we all chip in to pay Adam $5,000. Why, why don't we go for 20 minutes more today and then schedule another one? Yeah. I, yeah. Agree with Rob. I have to leave for work the most. Just after ten. Yeah, so. I, yeah. I, I mentioned. Uh, I mentioned we can. Uh, we can all discuss in the chat. Set up a date for next month, and also I think we should pay Adam per funny joke. That way he'll still be doing it for free. So that means he's gonna be paying us then. I, I, you don't go into the negative. I don't think. I don't think I owe you money if I bomb. Yes, I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> yes, that's also, how that works. Also, I didn't works. bomb. You guys just shit shit on me. <laughs> like, <laughs> <you're saying>. like, <laughs> Okay, so at, let's get Adam G um, to ask his <laughs> questions. Maybe we'll end before ten. Then I would like to give like a little a little blurb at the end if that's okay with you guys. Oh yeah, I, I also would like to say I hate each and every one of you with truly from the bottom of my heart, and I hope you all fail in life. That's what I want to say. Go on, Adam. What's your question? <laughs> um, so as a as a member of the XCOM, um, does your vote belong to you or somebody else? I feel like this was and by somebody already. that could be a person or an entity or whatever. This was definitely asked already. This is like kind of asked already. Oh, wait, though. that's kind of hard for the treasurer to answer because the treasurer and secretary, we kind of like don't have committees that we talk to. I know that's what I'm especially interested in. I figure all the answer already for the for the V V chairs, but I'm curious gotcha. about the uh, in particular the non V chairs. Okay, gotcha. well then oh. let's pose that to the the to the three non. So oh. Nicole actually. My, my vote belongs to the highest bidder. I just want to say that. <laughs> so my vote depends on a lot of things. It depends on the bylaws. It depends on whether or not it's going to cost the LP money. It depends on whether or not it's going to cost the LP something. It depends on what our constitution says. It depends on what our policy says. Um, says. So after I go through all of those, and I decide on whether or not I have um, a conflict of interest with that vote, then I take all of that into consideration and go from there. Um, a lot of my votes that you will see, um, especially when it comes to money, if we've got the money in the coffers and I know we're safe, then I'm a yes vote. Um, you're probably gonna see a lot of no votes here soon if we don't have the monies in the coffers. So. That is what my vote depends on. All right, uh, Laura. Um, my vote also d depends on a, a lot of things, but I will I will say I understand that, that this is nuanced because of, of the treasurer and secretary is a different position, but um, I will say that the NAP and is my you know, what I live my life by, if you will. And um, I'm a very principled person. And at the end of the day, um, my vote is with the membership and very my nice. conscience. Boom. All right. Uh, Greg. So uh, basically my vote belongs to the LPPA, right? it's whatever is going to be what I feel is going to be in the best interest of the, of the party. It doesn't belong to anybody else. Um, it hardly belongs to me. Um, you know, whenever weighing those decisions, uh, you have to, there's a lot of things like Nicole and Laura just said that we have a lot of things to consider, but um, in the grand scheme of things, I'm going to vote in accordance with what I think is the best for the Libertarian party of Pennsylvania. All right. Boom. Those are the three non chairs right there. Uh, Adam, yes, follow up. Oh, um, no, that was uh, it for the question, but I'll tell you what, I'll ask one last one. Uh, referencing a previous past chair of the LNC, if Dick Cheney won the nomination for uh, L Libertarian president, would you advise voting, voting for him or not? Is that for everybody? <laughs> I yeah, do know for everybody choose to make our work, so I would not vote for him. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I'm a subscriber of the yeah. non-aggression principle, so I wouldn't vote for him either. Anthony, uh, Joel. I definitely wouldn't go hunting with him. 
I, Nicole, I am a, I'm a, I'm a believer in principle over party. So no. Bill. No. Eric. No. Brett. No. John. I don't think it would happen unless the pig flew out of my ass that and looked like happen. Adam Nutter. You, you don't know. No, very handsome pig. It's a very <laughs> handsome pig. Uh, Greg. Not a chance. Uh, Laura. No, I would not. Is that everybody? Oh, Sally. No, thank you. That's it, right? Yeah. Okay, that's everybody. That's about what I figured. Thank you all very much. I'll stop bothering you now. I don't believe you. Um, okay. No, you won't. Don't lie to us. <laughs> We don't know better. You. Don't believe you at all. All right. Uh, I guess that in that case, this has been the thing that we all did together. huh? <laughs> and remember, yeah. you can sponsor Adam Nutter for just the price of a cup of coffee every day. And I'm the only <clears throat> one who got roasted the whole time. So you guys, I just, that's it. That's how we solve <laughs> party unity. I, just roast me. <laughs> and then no one will fight with each other. It's amazing. If you well. vote for me, you won't have to hear Joel try to be funnier than Adam. <laughs> okay first of all i am funnier than adam second okay, of all first fair. of all no <laughs> disagree real quick no. adam thank you um thank you joel and bonnie You're thank welcome. you very much i appreciate this opportunity to get in front of everybody yeah this is uh this is this is actually went well i thought it was gonna be a yeah. shit show but so before we stop recording i just want to give um like a little uh shout out to all of our candidates that took the time this evening to carve out and make membership um, and, uh, you know, the party their number one priority. Uh, I think that uh, no matter who wins in that, in, you know, in this capacity, um, we are in good hands. Uh, just seeing how many people came out tonight and had questions is really, um, it a really positive, uh, you know, feeling in me. Um, and I did just want to uh, say a little something. So I, what I tell my clients and my students um, when I'm teaching them is um, comparison is the biggest thief of joy, right? So uh, all of the, all of the candidates on the call tonight, um, do not compare yourself. I, I know that uh, the whole point of this is for people to decide who they're going to vote for and, and, you know, all of that good stuff, but there is no joy in comparison whatsoever. You are special. You bring a unique, um, you know, perspective and work ethic to this party and there's a place for you here, no matter what, um, just the fact that you are are brave enough and outspoken enough and you know committed enough to even run proves that you can do great things whether or not you are elected to the next competition. So please like don't leave this call thinking that you you know didn't do as good as someone else running or whatever. We see you, we appreciate you and you are what makes this party beautiful. So thank you. Yeah, Joel did terrible. He's still here showing his face. I mean, that's nothing, right? So have Thank that you, to look Bonnie. forward to. You, you look like Mark Bazzacco if he hasn't eaten for three months. That's more of an insult on Mark. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you're both just bad, so. All right. Thanks, everybody. So, this is okay, fun. Guys, I'm oh, going to stop the wait, recording. Wait. Point of this is, this is all this Sally music. Wanted. For all of your musical needs and the official songs. No free advertisements. No free advertisements here. No free advertisements here. Mute that shit. <laughs> <laughs>